Welcome, everybody. I've called the Shelburne Planning Commission to order on October 25th. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the agenda and did have a modification where um, there's a grant approval that um, we'd like to formally have on the agenda, so we're going to make that 4A. Is that feedback okay? So it's not just the voices in my head then, that's good. <laughs> um, how do we, well it could Hello, be, please. I don't know. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, there's always a quorum. <laughs> yeah, right, we're ready to go. Um, so is there a, a formal topic, do we just wanna say charging, EV charging station grant as the topic for that? for the Planning Commission to consider endorsing or authorizing the chair to endorse the EV charging station grant that's going to be submitted by the library steering committee or body or? Well, what's our name? New library and oh, yeah, well, I, I was mostly, yeah. The yeah. library group. Yeah. So, okay, by the library group, okay. All right, so I'll just call it that. Um, all right, so um, with... That'll be item... That would be item 4A. Or I suppose, yeah, we'd have a 4 and a 4A. So with that, um, with that change, any other discussion to the... relating to the agenda this evening? If not, then all in favor of, well, I guess, take a motion to approve the agenda as noted with the new 4A to discuss an EV charging station grant by the library group. So moved. Moved by Kate. Second. Second by Andrew. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, all right. Now we will move into approval of two sets of minutes. The first from September 27th. Take a motion to approve those minutes so moved. moved by dick seconded by stephen any discussion i did not have any comments on it anybody else all right then um all in favor of approval of the minutes of September 27th as written? Aye. Aye. Okay, now moving on to, I'll take a motion to re review the meetings from, the meeting minutes from October 11th. To approve or review? Just, well, a motion to review and then we discuss review, okay. and then we approve, yeah. Um, so moved. All right, moved by Andrew. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Asim. Any discussion? Yeah, I have one minor change. Uh, so there we discussed this, like federal funds are underutilized by the state for comprehensive bike pack. Second, pa second page, um, the last sentence of that, like I said that CCRP has some funds for technical studies, I meant to say, and I think I clarified that, like CCRP is authorized to have funds for technical studies under the safety loo and as amended by the recent transportation bill. Uh, so it's basically, originally safety loo was a 2006 transportation bill that's kind of like looks at the interactions of environment, land use and transportation. And then since then the two other transportation bills have been passed by the federal government and they give money directly to the regional planning commissions and metropolitan planning organizations for promoting bike pads and alternative transit uh, programs. And technical funds are available, but uh, in a 10-year study of that data set that I, one of my students did, we found that those were underutilized. And uh, we published about it. Basically, the problem is that those programs require matching grants and prioritization from the local towns in their capital improvement programs. But local towns typically what we found, especially in rural areas, don't have the capacity to um, kind of like build those plans uh, the way the federal government wants them to. So that was the intent of that comment, was that 
if we can kind of like change our capital improvement planning procedure that enables like say we can have bike path connectivity like a, a good study done CCRP can help us and they have they have the authorization under that bill to kind of contribute towards the technical study but the local government would also need to kind of like uh, come up with some matching contribution. So would it be okay to amend it as a CMZ said CCRPC has access to federal funds from sources such as safety, lieu, and successive legislation for technical studies? Absolutely, yes. Okay, you that want to get safety, lieu in? Yeah, yeah. Get it in? That, that would take away the intent which currently states that they have funds for disbursement by themselves. It's not... But you want to add that but the, the local municipality needs to contribute in order to get those funds? Right. I mean, that was part of our, like, capital planning discussion. I felt like we were going to discuss that as part of the memo. If we, if we were going to write a memo to the select board about, cap, about kind of, like, medium to long-term changes in the way we do capital, capital planning, it seems to me that it's very ad hoc. Hmm. And it's not very kind of, like, it doesn't take into account, like, we went through this process of developing comprehensive plan, and there are certain priorities that we have set up. But how do we align those priorities with capital improvement plan? Because capital improvement plan, the plans, the projects that get funded for funding, that they should be in line with our medium to long term kind of like comprehensive plan priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems to me that bike path issues, as well as some of these cultural hub planning in the rural areas, were on, rose to the top for me, at least, as part of that conversation. So. So for the purposes of the minutes, would it be enough to add beyond the sentence that it was just amended, these funds require local match? Yes. I mean, that could be probably. Uh, or these, these funds require local match, comma, which must be, and a poor sentence construction, which must be budgeted for? I mean, is that, if that's part of your message is that, okay, the federal dollars are available, some communities don't have the match, or at least they don't plan to have the match. So draw attention to the fact that you need a match and that you need to budget for it. Yeah. Well, and I would say also that this, uh, th that this help will help to realize the goals in the town plan. Right. This is an important mechanism. Absolutely. That yeah. is the big picture kind yeah. of like message. Yeah, just kind of tie it all in. It's the, it's the, you know, we really want to make these things actionable. I mean, so, so after you amended that sentence, CCRPC has funds as you amended, Dean. After that, if you could just say, like, this comment that, that if we could develop our capital improvement plan in the light of these kind of, like, opportunities that are available, but we need to plan that for that in, in advance yeah. to... All I'm trying to do is get the words to, yeah, yeah. that would be modifying the minutes very clear so that Mary Ann, who's going to be working on the minutes from this tape, knows what she should put in. Yeah. I distinguish what would be in the minutes from whatever it is that the commission might say later when discussing the CIP and whatever contents yeah. might go in that memo. Yep. Yeah. And I was going to suggest that we just amend it as you had initially address just to clarify your statement, but then we bring this up during the SIP discussion. That later. sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So that, that original, uh, just indicating that there are funds available and... Yeah, yeah I'll reread what I... Um, so with what I thought I was hearing, Asim said, CCRPC has access to federal funds from sources such as safety lieu and successive legislation uh, for technical studies. These funds require a local match period. But later today, or later tonight, you'll talk about right. the specifics of how it relates to capital planning and budgeting under seven. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. And any other comments on the minutes from the 11th? I, I just wanted to mention one other thing. Uh, Marianne and I did go back a little back and forth on email a little bit. Um, there's not much detail in the discussion of the plan, even though you talked about it for hours. And she, she, um, she could have, um, but it would have meant spending a lot of time. And I wondered whether or not, since the comments were reduced to writing in the annotated form, if people are comfortable with the minutes the way they are, great. But I just wanted to also mention that one thing 
if, well, if people are fine with the way they are, great. But if people wish there were more details, then there may be an alternative way to deal with that. Part of me would like to meet the person that would actually go through and review in that detail versus just looking at the annotated document. Um, there might be a case study in there. What did, right. What <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, and you referenced that, though, I think, right? Um, well, the draft comprehensive plan. I mean, if anybody needed to see that annotated version, it is most certainly available. And right. that's what think, was distributed. I think Marianne just felt badly because she's Ugh. so accustomed to having a lot of detail mm -hmm. that it seems like she took a lot of notes, but they didn't necessarily get reflected in the document. And I want it to be clear that I said, you know, don't spend hours and hours reducing that to writing because essentially it's been done. Right. And I just want to make sure that this group is okay mm -hmm. with the minutes not having that detail because you know that they're in the annotations. Sure. Are there any... You strong just feelings on that, that. Is that document specifically referenced in here? Well, it's not, and yeah. that's where I'm going. Is that if you wanted the minutes to make note of the fact that the details about the discussion are included in the annotated, then you could you could add that. So would that be conserved somehow? Well, it could be. It's been I've seen uh, instances where this document is whatever document it is is uploaded with the minutes. So. I suggest that we do that because we spent hours going through that. Yeah. But also, like when you say, like, and listed the first three priorities. But actually, a lot of the discussion was about developing those three priorities for each section. Well, that's, that's why I'm bringing so it just up, just like so that the placing know. listed with the developed. Because you'll be approving the minutes, unless you don't approve them. Uh, so how about uh, turning that into two sentences? The Planning Commission reviewed the draft comprehensive plan and made mi minor edits period, um, uh, listing the first three priorities under re recommended actions in each section uh, took up the majority of the discussion, and then say, see annotated, um, you know, version of the, yeah, of the town plan, you is. know. And yeah, that's, it's an annotated version of the draft plan. And then plan. that's, that's yeah. the record right there, boom. Just with the sure. Yeah, it was the, ver well, it was produced that annotated version was cleaned up from the notes that were taken that night. So, yeah. I mean, it'll be, it is scanned and it'll be attached if you want it to be attached. I think that makes it clear what we did and this was the work product, yeah. if anybody's interested. You could say, yeah. put in the minutes, put in brackets, see attached. See attached, see exactly. Attached. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so where are we? Do we need somebody to, are we? Uh, if there are, well, unless there are any other comments on those minutes, nope. Yeah, then, um, well, I think we've already had the motion, so all in favor of the minutes as approved? Aye. 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 Okay. So Can I have one favor? Is it acceptable if a seaman I switch seats? Yes, so sure. Put my leg up on another chair over there. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Thank you. I did shower today, though. Uh, that's nothing to do with you. <laughs> be here tomorrow yeah. same position <clears throat> sure thing all right so the next is disclosures do we have any disclosures relating to any of the uh, topics tonight conflicts of interest all right then 4a would be discussion of an EV charging station grant so I'm Ruth Hagerman I am the chair of the Library Board of Trustees mm -hmm. I'm also a member of the Construction Committee, which is um, the group of volunteers that's working with the town to b dig a huge hole over there and then fill it back in with a new building, and also we're working on Town Hall. We're also working on the parking lot. So the state of Vermont has recently gotten a very large settlement from the Volkswagen diesel scandal. Um, I think they got $17.5 million. Um, and one of the things they're doing with it is they are making um, $2.5 million available to anyone in the state of Vermont who would like assistance putting in EV charging stations. So this has been on our list. We actually applied for one in the spring and did not get that grant. Um, but the um, 
state coordinator for that said he thought this would be a really um, good opportunity for us. He thought we would be very strong applicants. So we're working on that grant. We're working with Negley and Chase, the construction company, to, to put together actually the technical details um, and what we need. We're going up to the select board on the 13th of November to get the actual grant signed. And before that, we need the signature of the chair of the Planning Commission. And what you're signing is, it says, the Municipal Planning Commission recommends applying for said grant. Okay? So I don't know if you want any details um, or if you're just willing to just sign it and let us go ahead. If you, what, how would you like to proceed? <laughs> budget. Yeah. Budget. Okay. So we don't actually have a budget because Negley and Chase is putting together the numbers for us. Okay. The mat there, but I will say that the, um, uh, the grants are not limited in terms of a top number. Okay. The match, um, we will match. It's a 10% match because we're a municipality, and that 10% match will come from the bond um, under um, uh, general site improvements. So we're not asking anybody to pay any more money than they've already paid. Okay. What else? What does that get? What does it get? What we're going to be asking for is, um, so charging stations, there's one charging station, and it has two uh, charging cords off of it. So you, you take two parking spaces, you put the charging space and uh, charging unit in between it. So we're asking for the infrastructure, um, which would be the um, conduit to come out to the spot, the bollard that the charging unit sits on, then you purchase the charging unit and you install that. And we're asking for that. And then the second thing we would be asking for is an additional conduit to be laid so that if we need, wanted to buy another charging unit in the future, the conduit would be there and the bollard. If we didn't, if the town never wanted any more EV charging stations, then they wouldn't have to use it. If the town wanted to go for a, this is for a level two charger. Um, if the town wanted to go up to the super high charging Tesla type charger, that capacity would be there waiting as well. Okay, so we're the ones you're getting would be the ones we're getting is a level two. J1772. Uh oh. So. Uh oh. <laughs> now you just jumped over my knowledge. Yeah, probably. Right. I mean, that's it's sort of the generic standard for most cars it, other than Tesla. And Tesla has adapters. To Tesla has the adapters. But there's, yeah. yeah, so level one is like if you just plug in your garage just using yeah. a regular outlet and that's really slow. Yeah. So this is the next step up. So it's 220. So it's 220. Right. Yeah. And how will the economics yeah. work going forward? Is this free electricity from the town for anybody to the use, or is it going to be through one of the providers? No, we're going to um, buy the kind of unit with the card, the, I think it's charge point units is yeah. usually what, what people get. Yeah, so it's not going to cost, the, we're not going to be giving free electricity to yeah. people. Not that it would cost that much, but <laughs> everybody in town would be over here like, let me plug my card in. I think it's great. I have, we have two electric cars, uh -huh. always looking for more charging stations. I think it's. Yeah. Yeah. Cool service. I think it's perfect for the library um, to have as patrons are using it. Mm -hmm. They can. Take well, it's a good spot. Right now, the Central. only other one that I know of in town is up at Teddy Bear, which is great for Teddy Bear, but it doesn't really help any of the rest of us because who walks down from Teddy Bear to town? Whereas if you're here in this parking lot, you can yeah, do all kinds of other things. The station across the street has been talking about putting one in too, so oh, that really? would be another one, oh, which okay. would be nice. But I agree. Yeah, I think great. we should have a few in the town just yeah. to attract. Uh, business people How come long? charge yeah. and then they walk around and they spend money. Yeah. How long would a car sit there or to be charged? Yeah, it depends, depends on, on the, the car. Vendor, really. <laughs> well, it also depends on the car. I was just wondering how you can. I have a Nissan Leaf, for example, that uses 220 volt charge. It takes about, I mean, it goes to like half battery, gets filled up like in an hour. So would you have a sign or something like for people that they? Well, if it's through one of these vendors, it's going to you're going to be paying by the. Whatever, and it's usually on a 30-minute session. Uh, not so much session. worried about that, but somebody parking their, their vehicle day. and going off and forgetting about it. Yeah, well, so that's a whole other issue of electric vehicle mm -hmm. etiquette. That when you're yeah. done charging, you should. Yeah. So would there be car? a sign yeah. there that says one-hour parking or something? Or? There was something in the in the package from the state that had a particular right. sign that there are, there is signage that, that goes along with it, and that is one of the. I, I can check what the signs exactly say, but I'm just curious that is that is true. It is a like you, like Andrew said, it's an etiquette question. Um, it's been called when you get iced when you go to find your charging <laughs> spot, and there's an internal combustion engine car sitting there taking that spot up. That happened to me yesterday. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but they have yeah. a language there that says, and they, the police officers come if your uh, EV is parked and it's done charging, they typically give you a warning first. But if you're caught second time, they give you a ticket. So as far as uh, whether or not the commission is okay with, I'm all in favor. Yeah. yeah. All right. I was Strong too. Strong support. Strong Great. support. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, quick question. Yep. When you apply to this spring, mm -hmm. did you get feedback from any of the people that administer the program that gave you hints on how to tweak the application and perhaps be successful this time? Um, I they they weren't really very specific. I think what it was that was a very small program, and I think they just ran out of money. They had more applicants than they had. Um, people, but we we know we have a very strong position at this time because we we are going to have all of the professional. We're not having to retrofit anything. This is all new wire. It's going to be a new fuse box in the library. It's everything is um, from suggest, the ground up. I would suggest Ruth that you mention but, the context mm -hmm. as being um, you know something that would be very it would be very supported because mm -hmm. um, that may be. So right. that would be winning. Or right. Just, just point it out to them. Yeah, there's there are a lot of things like that. There's one place where it says, you know, is this mentioned in your town plan, which it is mentioned in the new town plan. They want to know statistics and about how many people are on places. seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are a lot of ways like that. They have it set up so that you get points for everything yeah. you can say like that. So we've been going through the list saying, can we say this? Can we say this? So yeah, I'm, it's I'm like what you're think, asking for. I think we'll be good. There. Yeah. Big and points. Yeah. Charging. This would be one where you'd pull the cord out of the, the so the charger charging unit would be there. You'd pull the card and, and plug it into the car. So would you be able to park in the adjacent space? The yeah, I mean that's depending on how long the cards are. That's one issue. Like so, the Tesla cords at the Tesla stations they're pretty short, so you kind of have to back in. Some of them can be a little bit longer. So you'll see sometimes people will get creative and kind of park adjacent and try and reach the cord. It it, it totally depends on who the charging vendor is. Mm. But it's, yeah, it's one of those things I think as we go forward, people are going to understand that. Some people even now who are driving EVs carry around little notes in their car that are pre-made up saying, you know, like, I'm charging when I'm done. If you want to unplug me and use it, go for it. Or this is, you know, little things like that mm -hmm. to say what their status is. All right. So we're all good. I, I think my, my question was more procedural that the... The language that was in the draft in the grant document was indicating that it was already it would have already been approved by the select board prior to getting a no planning commission. Nope, you're well, number two. Because the language that three. you wrote up was neutral and did not have that. Yeah, there's select board is there. Are gaps there. And, and uh, right, it was second in page. The whereas I think the second whereas was that the select board had already approved it, or the municipality no. had. Or no, no, it's that one is the municipality has voted to provide local funds for an electrical vehicle charging station. We did that last year. That was the bond vote. Oh, okay, That's, gotcha. <laughs> right. Okay. So, yeah, so, and then I'm you're good. the next thing, and then after that, it's um, who the town is going to agree to appoint as the local municipal authority, and then after that, it's the select board. Sure. So you really are the next the next thing. I'm going to just do that now. Sure. That'd be great. So sure. That motion <laughs> went and passed? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, it was in, all in favor of approving the letting this go for the grant? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Uh, all right. Yeah, make sure you the right one. More importantly, do I remember my name? Yeah. There you go. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. you got it. Right. Work on that. Okay. Yeah. All thank right. you. Okay. Thanks. This is the best. We okay. are still going to have coffee. <laughs> I'm coffee stations. So. I think we're two, we get two EV parking spaces. We should have two coffee stations. Yes. That sounds fair enough. Thank you, guys. We'd probably agree to that as well. Um, okay. Next item is open to the public. For anything that's not on the agenda? No. <laughs> All right. Seeing none, then we can move on to the zoning topics. This, the first item is the uh, public hearing on changes that we made a little while back. I don't remember what that date was. You warned this hearing, yeah, a month ago. We warned it a month ago, discussed it, yeah. Um, so is... Since we've we've gone through this, has anybody in the review of this come up with additional questions, or are there any comments from the public? I'm not sure which topic 
you might be here to discuss. So maybe for Marianne's benefit, just declare the hearing open since this is a public hearing. Sure. And um, I don't know if you want any kind of recap for, I don't know if you're here for this yeah. or for the other item. Oh, okay. Then I'll declare the hearing open and, and then um, I'll do a, if like, you want a quick, quick recap overview. and then, sure. Good show. Yeah. I have one, a one word proposal change. Okay. Sure. If there's no other changes. And it's on I don't page know. four, number two, and it's a should shall situation. Um, number two says building envelopes and no cut zones shall be required by the development review board to ensure the preservation of site features. Building envelopes should avoid open fields and core, for, core forest. And it says should not include sensitive areas. I think it should say shall not. Sorry. Sensitive areas. Oh, there's two page fours. So it's the second one, number two. Gotcha. Do you want to take that up now, or do you? I, well, the background for it would be in the. Well, uh, yeah. If we're actually, if we're going to do this, I mean, if we're going to open a hearing and get a quick background on what it is, then we could do the background and then okay. open the discussion, and then we could maybe be a bit more oriented. If that works into a background. Uh, just, yeah, maybe to give a quick and dirty orientation. Um, this is a proposed amendment that uh, has its origins in the request mm -hmm. from the Miniers who own the property that is um, more than 10 acres absolute, but uh, less than 10 acres in terms of developable land area. So this proposal addresses that uh, by making some adjustments to the PUD requirements. Uh, in terms of the actual edits to the bylaw, um, those show up in the table, which is in Article 2, um, by updating some of those references. Uh, and then it shows up because we're talking about the rural district, that's where the mini property is. It also shows up in Section Article 3, which is Section 300. Uh, and this is where the Minier's uh, request would be addressed. Um, 330 is the area of the bylaw that talks about density. Um, it would be modified to clarify that the maximum density for single family residential uses is, um, is different when you have a lot that is less than 15 acres. And it would basically say it's one unit for five acres we don't talk about developable land. It's just one unit per five acres. But once you get out of that situation, the old system is retained. Everything is based on five acres of developable land. Um, then there's some corresponding cleaning up of the language. Since we're talking about density and land uh, lot size, it makes it clear that lot size is determined when you have a PUD approval. Um, that makes sense because the proposal would make all subdivisions, all re residential subdivisions in the rural district uh, subject to the PUD requirement. That's found in section 340. So that's the kind of, that's the material that's mainly there in response to the Minier request. The PUD specific edits are found in article 1900, which is the general regulations. The PUD material is, starts in 1930. Um, and this is where the specific modifications come into play. One is to modify the periphery buffer, basically saying it's 50 feet. Um, then um, there is a change proposed to the amount of open space. Uh, it would go to 60% under this proposal. And there's some language that's cleaned up in paragraph or subparagraph C, which is the design standards. Um, and I think this is where this is getting close to some of what Dick was talking about. Um, it would change a should to shall having to do with lot layout. So lot layouts shall be designed to minimize potential conflicts with ag operations. So that's one of it. Um, building envelopes and no cut zones shall be required. Uh, that's another one. Building envelopes should avoid open fields and core forests. So there is that distinction that you can discuss um, when, when I'm done, done here. Um, there is 
an itemization of the open space requirements that's found in paragraph four, and so that up, upping of the open space requirement to 60% is uh, reflected here. That is the full extent of it. Uh, process so far, um, as you mentioned, you've discussed this for a period of months, literally, um, and the discussion with the Minyes about some kind of zoning amendment to address their situation goes back many years. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, and then so then on that number two in 1930.3C. Was you're just suggesting to change that change should that to show not to show. So should, uh, the reasoning being and the, the objectives it said to it. Well, the reason being it makes sense. Yeah, it's much more logical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just so I'm keeping up the mm -hmm. building envelopes, that should is the one that changes no. to show or no, it's the later one. It would be the after the deleted line. And sh shall not include sons of various okay. weapons. Got it. Yep. So, out of curiosity, the fact that we removed steep slopes from the density consideration, does that then kind of force it back in? If we're saying you can't build on sleep, steep slopes? No, because the no, objective just, also mentioned steep slopes. I didn't know. I knew you. No, no. We just can't be built on it. It's not. <laughs> it's not part objective. of the density calculation. Which, which is fair. I yeah. just want to make sure yeah. that it's not. It's just. It's a locational thing. We're not defeating our purpose here. To, um, where on the lot they can be. Okay. Yeah. Which? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you go back to the? Tell me when to stop. You're there, so. Okay, so so basically, what you're doing is you're you're. Oh, I'm sorry. I, okay, I'm, I hope Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't have a. Okay. Um. All right. So, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I I hate to be seem like I'm dense on this. No. But no I problem. guess what I'm trying to understand is. You're changing the, um, I think originally these folks were trying to subdivide, but with the slope, it wasn't possible to, if you considered the slope right. of the land, it wasn't possible to do the uh, subdivision and build on it. Okay. So, so how is this allowable to make a change based on one case? That's my question. It's not necessarily one case because okay. it, it was sort of instigated, but there's been other subdivisions over the, in that area as well. And that we just felt that we needed to push it, these subdivisions in the direction of the town goals were. So it's not, it's not a single issue. It's basically the whole the whole area. All right, so it applies to the whole a area. The rural. The rural yeah. district. Right. Is, it, is this that, like the east side of uh, Spear Street? Is that, that the this, rural district? I mean, this specific this area. This particular okay. case that's prompted this change. Where is that located? Oh, the property, yeah. In other words, yeah. I will try to get that. They're on Dorset Street extension. Oh, okay. There was another one that was on the corner of with a sharp corner, what was called Spears Corner. Does anybody know where Spears Corner is? No. It's the sharp corner on the way to CVU when you turn to the left. And uh, there was one there, and there was another one on Dorset Street Extension before that. So there's been at least three up there. But it's not, it's just been an ongoing thing. Yeah. Okay. And just to clarify too with the slopes, it wasn't that you couldn't, that because there's so much slope on that, land that they couldn't build there at all. It was that in calculating, you know, the, the lot, we would throw out wetlands and things to come up with a developable land to allow the subdivision. So the d total developable land 
within their 10 acres was, the lot was a little larger than 10 acres, and this made it a little smaller than 10 acres once you throw all these pieces out. And our, you know, the belief we came to realize from other people was, you know, that's, we could control where people build, so they don't build in wetlands, they don't build on slopes and other things. But to say, you know, that, that it can't be subdivided at all seemed harsher. So, you know, calculate the total area of the lot. Is it big enough to subdivide, yes or no? And then once it's subdivided, say, okay, we can now have pretty granular control. This is a piece that Dick drove through to know, okay, that people are going to build in the right places and not endanger habitat or things that we want to protect and preserve. Does that make yeah, sense? Sort of yeah. lessening a restriction. Yeah. It's right, okay. Yeah. And it was sort of a, I mean, as I understand it, the historical precedent was it was sort of a backdoor way to not allow these lots to be subdivided rather than going, you know, back to 10 acre lots. It was like, well, if we do this, then a lot of these things can't be subdivided. So it's sort of a sneaky way to stop it from happening. So if the rule's five acres, it seems like it's kind of hindering some of that. But that only applies to somebody who has less than 15 acres, which means they could only add an existing house on the lot, which would mean they could only add one house. So they could only subdivide in half. It doesn't apply if, if the, the lot size is larger than that. So it lets somebody with an existing house add another house on another lot within their. It has the acreage, takes the penalty away. Yeah. Does that? Yeah, and, and this, was had, this has nothing to do with the, any sort of Hamlet discussion. That's a totally different subject. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, so any other discussion with the exception of that change to 1930.3, section C, number two? All right. Then the next step would be to, we've got the bylaw change report. So the next step would be to close a motion to close the public hearing. Unless, Dean, you had anything else to add on this? No? OK. Does anybody want to make that motion? Should we read it verbatim here? Um, it, it, whoever makes the motion, and I, it's not repeated in the second one to spare you all. But yeah. I mean, or you can just make reference to it, and we'll make sure that Mary Ann uses the language that if you're going to use the language in the memo, then you could cite the language in the memo. Huh. But perhaps yeah, for I just wanted to audience. make sure that we note that, that the change that Dick had suggested gets in there. So yeah, just noting that, is, that with the modification discussed in 1930.3 C2. Yeah. So I would say I move the public hearing on the proposed changes to the zoning bylaws, which may be summarized in this language below that Marianne can find and include plus the change that Dick made in 1930, 1930 C number two. C2 from yeah. should to shall. I mo motion that this public hearing be closed. Motion. So moved. Motion by Angie, second by Kate. OK. The public hearing is closed. So then uh, next, look for a motion to approve forwarding the zone change proposal to the select board. Do you want to do that one too? Second. So, all right, using the language that's in the packet here, moved the motion to approve forwarding the zone change proposal and associated report to the select board has been moved by Dick and seconded by Stephen. And yeah, that's it, right? We don't need Thank to continue. You. Thank you. Thank you. Was Did you? Yeah, I was just going to say all, no. all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Any you. <laughs> Apparently, today was more distracting than I thought it was. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so staying with the zoning topics, there's a uh, another modification in the rural district setbacks. Yeah, this is. 
if I can just jump right in, this, yes. this was something that was uh, included in your packets for your last meeting. It was going to be really just kind of a, a quick exposure to this issue. Um, and that's probably not much different from what I'm going to do tonight. So I realized that the amount of time that was included on the agenda for, for zoning related matters was really more than is necessary. Um, but as um, I've indicated in the memo, there has been an issue that's come up in connection with the Shelburne Shipyard property. And um, there are aspects about it that are very similar to what came up with Quiniasca. Uh, although the lots that are involved are very different in size. The Quiniasca lot was very large. Um, there are no side yard setback issues, but there were issues having to do with front yard setbacks, namely that the building was entirely within the front yard setback. And that was sketched out um, the way I've shown in this particular diagram. You came up with some changes that would address that. Um, it would also you know, have taken care of some less difficult situation where only part of the building is. But what the Planning Commission agreed to do was to modify this section of the zoning regs where it said in the rural district, if it's a structure is not conforming by virtue of extending into the setback, it may be expanded uh, as long as it doesn't get any closer to the road and as long as the building footprint doesn't get any larger than 25%, doesn't increase by more than 25%. So rural district, large lot, um, we weren't thinking of situations where the lot might be small, where in addition to having an encroachment in the front yard, there was also an encroachment on the side yard. And also, we weren't thinking of anything other than a public highway, because if you go back, we weren't smart enough. I was certainly not smart enough. Um, because we, and maybe this, maybe I can put the blame on Dave Marshall, because I'm not sure. I know that there was an initial draft. But the, the language that's used says closer to the public road. Well, what about a situation where it's not set back from a public road? Let's say the public road ends, and there's a right of way that goes across. Well, what about this situation and a situation like that? And that's exactly the situation. This one down here is exactly the situation that the um, Lake Champlain Transportation Company, which owns this tiny little parcel um, that you get to by going through the Shelburne Shipyard, is in. Uh, the public road is, if you follow the hand here, uh, public road is way over here. And then you follow a private road and private right of way through the Shelburne Shipyard property. And that's how people get to the Lake Champlain Transportation property. And as you can see, they have these buildings there's one here and there's one here um, that essentially are in this situation. They're too close to the front. They're too close to the side. The way the regulations are written, the relief that was provided to Quiniasca that you can, you can, in, you can increase by up to 25% as long as you don't get closer to the road, the relief that Quiniasca got doesn't help them. And the, the weird thing about this situation is that it first came to light um, you know, just a couple of months after Quiniasca, the Quiniasca situation was um, addressed. And there's been a little bit of um, biding of time, I think, on their part to try to figure out whether or not they could revise their project. But they're, they're looking at changes to these buildings that would necessitate an increase in the size. So that is what would trigger um, the problems with the zoning regulation. So long story short, this, this issue came to um, staff's attention. I just wanted to get it in front of you. Um, I might, might have had a misunderstanding because I thought I had mentioned this date to the folks from Lake Champlain Transportation. Um, so I half expected them here but basically wanted to know whether or not this is something that the commission would want to consider further. The language that's at the bottom of this page was really just to help put this idea in, in, um, in a context, um, strike the reference to public highway. If the commission was inclined to say, oh, well, the, the kind of 
solution we offered to Quinnyaska could be afforded to someone in a situation like Lake Champlain Transportation, and we could fix part of the problem by striking public highway and public road and just move, um, modify it and say it doesn't get closer to the lot frontage. And then adding the second sentence, which would deal with these situations where, because it's a small lot, it's not just the front yard setback, there's also the side yard setback. So what do they want to do? Do they want to expand more along your, look, using your diagram? This, this particular thing? Okay. I, don't, well, I don't have their, I, well. What is it they want to do? Yeah, they want to increase this building. Uh, I think this one, they want it to go up. So this one, the footprint is not going to get any larger. Um, and this one, uh, the issue is really primarily this one. I think this one, they may be able to stay in the existing footprint. And they, can be sh they can be moving things around inside. But my attention has really been focused on this one, which uh, I believe that if there's any increase in footprint at all, it's because it's, it's just kind of, uh, it's an old building um, and you know, efficiency, economy, that, you know, instead of 11-foot boards, 12-foot boards, that kind of thing, it's, it's going to be a slight increase, if at any at all, in the footprint. But the major thing that they want to do is go into the second story. And that's not allowed. Why isn't that allowed? Where is that not allowed? It's, well, because of the way that the, the, uh, the preceding language ahead of the stuff that's here talks about any expansion. So mm. any um, expansion includes a volume expansion. Mm. And so going up would be prohibited unless there is this exemption here. Is that the, in the lecture language? So, no, this isn't. This doesn't have anything to do with the lakeshore. There, there is a lakeshore setback in this property, but that's not what's driving this discussion. It's the language that is um, in would, 1920 having to do with modification. Would the, the lakeshore language that recently came about from the state would that have an effect? Again, this the stuff that Lake Champlain Transportation Company is dealing with that. Um, will face a perilous zoning journey to the DRB doesn't have to do with the lakeshore. It has to do with the modification of a non-conforming structure in 1920 and the fact that they want to be expanding a building. This, in this instance, I think a little bit footprint, but mostly up. That's, a, that's an expansion. And they want to do it in the front yard and the side yard. And right now, the DRB would have to say, that's an expansion, and you can't do it. But if you were like Quinniaska, and you're going back, you could do it. Is, there, is it worth exploring the language that comes before that, that talks about any expansion? Because I feel like as long as it's. Yes, it's certainly it could. Um, like I said, my idea was to just make you aware of this issue and to determine or confirm that, yep, you do think it's worth scheduling a more full discussion, make sure that they're here. And in terms of possible solutions, it could be something that involves modifications to an earlier section of 1920. But since the edit for Quinniaska had been made to the paragraph here, that's where I just focused. I just thought, OK, if people are wondering what made it look like, the, the way I responded was to modify that particular paragraph and give you some idea of what it might look like. So, Dean, um, well, one question. Um, why are we even talking about this possibility? Because they're uh, within the Lakeshore setback, right? This building is not. This, this building, the, the, the shading of the edge of the 100 uh, foot from the 102 is here. So oh, okay. it doesn't address this building. All right. And then the second thing, um, why do we need to uh, change the regulations to include a footprint change if we're really talking about going up because it seems if I was a neighbor and I wasn't like a friendly neighbor uh, if somebody wanted to extend all the way along you know a two closed property line in both directions I, yeah. I think I'd have a problem with it but it doesn't sound like they really want to do that it sounds like they just want to go up and so can't we just 
do something? I mean, I'm just theoretical. Yeah. Uh, can we just say we allow them to not expand the footprint, but um, to, to go upwards because they're not creating more of a, um, a, a nonconformance in the, in the footprint? Yeah. It so, tricky, so because we're affecting, we don't know how many other properties or what type of properties we're affecting at this point. So, again, this, the main purpose of this was um, there was a second bite at the apple. Originally, this would have been like five minutes after your discussion. Um, so it's taking a bit more time. And, and again, the intention is just gauge some interest in addressing the problem. This, po this illustration of a potential solution, there's nothing, in, there's nothing about it that's magical. It was really drawn up this way to show the parallels with Cuneasca. But it is not necessarily you know, anything close to the best way to address it. Now, like I said, I don't believe that there's no chance that they won't need a footprint expansion, uh, as well as a height expansion or volume expansion. Um, so I'm not prepared to say that that volume alone would address their need, but maybe it would. Uh, if we have if maybe it does do it, then you could look at volume. And I just, I didn't want to make it too complicated but by this bringing 25% cap, yeah, double the size of the building, you know what I mean? Like, you add a second story, that's going to be more than 25%. So I think you'd have to address the 25% issue as well, too, right? But it's 25% well, it, mm -hmm. of the existing the footprint. footprint. Yeah. Up is not part of the footprint. Right. And, okay. and breaking it down to that fine a level is stuff that I think should happen if, if this is something that you deem worthy of further discussion. I mean, the, the purpose of tonight wasn't to say, OK, this is what's going to be the solution. The purpose was really just get you to start to understand that there's an analogous situation. There's a bigger volume element. I mean, the thing about Kuniaska, I mean, there's, there's nothing that I'm aware of that would I'm not sure. I'd have to think through whether or not they're prohibited from adding a second story given the language that they have. Because the footprint, the language says that they can expand, maybe expanded or extended, if such expansion does not get any closer. And the prohibition is on the footprint. The prohibition isn't on the volume here. Yeah. So I'm not. Which would address the, you couldn't just have a property owner extend all the way down the, the lot frontage, because they couldn't extend more than 25% of the existing footprint. Yeah. But well, so make sure yeah, they may not be able to extend at all. If oh, they're not in the zone though. You said. Wait a second. Is it 100 feet back from the lakeshore? Yeah, we're not talking about the lakeshore. So it's not in play. We're talking about the issue with something that is the situation here, where it doesn't front a public highway. That's that's one thing that is an issue for them, uh, and then second is the side the side yard setback. That's the thing that, in Quiniaska's case, there was no need to address side yard setback because it's such a big lot and it wasn't, it didn't need relief on that side. So again, the purpose of this is just to get a sense of whether or not it should be scheduled for further discussion, not to say that this is the right solution, but it's. So looking at the photo, is there part of that land that is buildable? Is there part of this lot that is expanded? Where they could extend? Like, could uh, they do an addition onto that building that, that stays in a conforming the, location. outside of the setbacks? Um, well, or maybe your diagrams are not showing. So, um, so they don't so, have any land at all that's. So it would have to be 50 feet back here, and it's going to have to be. So, yeah, I'm not sure that they have any area. And the question would be, you know, if, if they went to get a variance, I think the idea was, you know, which is, which is more worth their time? If this group's response was, you know, we really, we really think that you'd be better served by seeking a variance, then they would seek a variance, maybe not get it, and then come back. And then seek, and, and maybe that's the stance that the group wants to take. I almost think that's the way to go. If you'd rather to see them go. at least what they want to um, do. Yeah. But I playing devil's advocate, I think, at least the way you've written this is pretty elegant in that, you know, our solution was very, we tried not to be Quinias so specific, but it was pretty specific to that scenario, really only dealing with the front of the lot. We didn't address the side. I don't know how the 
back side. Does that count as a side? Or? Uh, does the the lake side here, the front? No, I'm just imagining this lot. It has, what is that? What is that has a neighbor. Area? Like if you go back to your diagram of the. Or, yeah, I mean, what the pink line that's on the back side. Okay. Of the lot. Yeah. I, the the. I mean, you, uh, it would have to be a yes. Yeah, so typically, rear yard setbacks aren't an issue, although I suppose. Just imagining that. You know, if that house was, or the structure was stuck in the back corner and they wanted to expand it, it would be, it would non-conform for the yeah. back lot setback as well. Right, and and um, I guess in terms of the likelihood of uh, of there being a problem, a side yard is likely to be a problem more often than the rear yard, but it's certainly possible that there would be a situation where this blue box is back here yeah. And it's not an issue with the front yard setback, although then we would still have the matter of this, you know, do we want to say from a public road or not? Um, but it would be the rear yard. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess, I'm, you know, it's, it seems elegant in that it would then cover, I agree with the public highway versus lot frontage, you know, or whatever right of way for high, instead of highway and lot front instead of public road. but. Why wouldn't we approach this and say, okay, it, we could fix it for front, side, back? Yeah. And again, I'm just asking because I mean, well, it could be some scenario that I'm not thinking about. But what what is that dark area? That structure is there a structure? Um, right here. Right. This is one of the. This is where they pull ships up to do work on them. Like the ferry boats. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so the lot's already at like ninety percent. Right, but this isn't. Yeah, this isn't the area in question that they're talking about. This this would if they were needing to do stuff here in the Lakeshore setback. It's a completely different set of rules. It's for them the issue is this building here, as I understand it, and to a secondary extent this one here. But the principal issue is this one. Andrew, to, to address your um, question. I think the difference for me is that um, if it's the frontage along a either public road or private right away, that's a road, and and that's not um, really infringing on a, a neighbor's um, a, you know property. Whereas if we talk about sides and backs, then we have to look at well, you know, what happens if somebody has a building that's too close to like another Wouldn't building. This be a Rather uh, than isn't this only addressing road. situations where that thing's already there and non-conforming, and you're expanding it or adding to it? I don't think it would allow you to put a right. It's it, right. right. It's it yeah. is yeah. only for the non-conforming situation. So that neighbor is right. already existing with a building there. Yeah. And you're it's saying I want to make it a little bit worse. Well, I'm going to make it a little. I'm going to renovate it and maybe potentially make it up to 25 percent bigger. But I'm not moving any closer to your property. I'm. You know what I mean? Like, it's already, it is as close as it's going to get to you. I can't go any closer to you, but I can go into the open part of the lot that it hasn't been built out yet. Right. And I mean, I've argued that direction, um, like just recently, a month ago in Burlington, I made that same argument on a property that we're working on for a client. Uh -huh. And they said, no, it's not conforming. We don't allow for you to ex make it go, you know, into the, within the setback um, on that new part. You can build, you can add to the top of that existing footprint, but you can't extend it out in a, in a non-conforming way. So, so you can't, it's basically, you're making it worse. Yeah. Your, and in this case, the neighbor was really concerned about that and, um, and did try to block the, the project right. because it was, in fact, making their life worse. Yeah, and this change may not may not be detrimental here, but it also affects other properties. Yeah, and those are the properties that I'm concerned with at this point. Right, that's yeah. the only thing. Something to to keep in mind is that we wouldn't we wouldn't really be having these conversations if it weren't for the fact that Shelburne zoning regulations. Um, have crossed that line, and they have said that it's okay to extend along that point of encroachment, that plane of encroachment, um, 
And so when you say it for one particular district, you're you're in a you know in a defensive mode having to justify why you don't say it in other districts. But several years ago the zoning regulations were changed so that when we're talking about properties in the mixed use district, you do get to extend along that plane of encroachment. And so one of the questions that occurs to people is, well, gee, if you've got a property in the mixed use district and you get to expand along that plane of encroachment, why is it that you can't do it in other districts? And so I think that was part of the well, part of the basis or some, you know, gave some rationale for you allowing the 25 percent increase because you got other districts where people can expand. Now, if we didn't have any district where that was the case, we could be more like Burlington and take a, you know, Municipalities have a lot of uh, discretion when it comes to how they want to treat nonconformities. And they can be really absolute, like Burlington, it sounds like they're being, or they can be quite relaxed about it. And I'd say Shelburne's kind of in the middle, but with the language that exists in the mixed use district saying you can extend along the, the plane, you kind of have to defend, you know, an argument says, well, if you do it there, why not someplace else? What well, would we have to, if we say okay to this? For the rural district now, would we have to then make that change for all districts? Well, you've you've kind of you've already nibbled at it a little bit with the Quiniasca, and I think in part of me oh, felt can like. Can I play devil's advocate here for a second? I'm trying to find some waiver language that we have in Westford. Um, you know, it's not great to have a lot of nonconformities. You know, I mean, it makes it hard to reuse those properties. So um, I think. You know, how, I'm more interested in how can we create a path to to conformance and to reuse that's of these properties. That's why we did it in the mixed use district. We, yeah, we made that change. Well, that's why we have that zoning because the right. the form based code right. zoning right. because of the the disaster that was Which created is, from the older zoning. So this is so, a different argument, though it's a different district altogether. It's rural. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can. There's Even some. It's, we have it's, some waiver language that may be helpful. I'm just well, and and yeah, the, there are entirely alternative ways to address this through waivers, too, which might be something that you'd want to consider. But again, my interest was to just tee up the issue, find out whether or not it was something you'd want to discuss. I'm interested, personally. I don't, I don't know about other people, but I'm interested in pursuing this. I think this makes Sounds an like awful lot of sense. If there were something that we could localize and contain to this site, I wouldn't have a problem. Well, yeah. That would be a waiver. Yeah because I don't think it makes sense to make a bylaw that's only specific to a particular geographic region. Oh, yeah, that's so illegal. Well, oh, that too. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, just in, in reading this as in preparation, I, I thought that the, the language that was proposed here would certainly solve that. I think it, Stephen, you bring up some good points. I mean, I, I'm kind of trying to just boil this down to what is fundamentally what would this be as something to think about for when we get this onto an agenda where we can really dive into it. But ultimately, it would mean that any existing footprint in the rural area could be expanded 25 percent. I mean, to be incredibly simplistic, that's effectively so anywhere that that could be applicable in the rural district. Yeah, the rural district doesn't have building coverage maximums, doesn't have lot coverage maximums. So, I mean, those are things where you could, if you had building coverage maximums and you were creating something where someone was kind of given the incentive to have an expansion on the one hand, but on the other hand, they're told, well, but no, you can't actually use it because even though this language says you could, you're going to be held back by the building coverage maximum. But you don't have building coverage maximums in the rural district. So it's not there to be, you know, a sort of second obstacle for them to clear. Yeah, and I, I think so for that, I think those, those would be the edge cases where there would be a property in the rural district that has an existing building on it. That building could then be expanded 25%. The footprint could be expanded 25%. The height would be restricted to whatever the building height restriction is, in the, which is, I think, is 35 feet. Yeah, that's that's what Quiniasco's edits did. Right. So that that would be the thing to keep in mind for any future discussion that we have on this. Is those would be the properties to keep in mind. Right. Yeah, I think I so, hmm. I agree with you, Stephen. When I think about it, that 
side and back lot is much more likely to impact other people in a negative fashion. That the edge of the road is the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to impact a neighbor. It'd be hard to do negatively. So. Yeah, and and just you know, on the fly, it could be as simple as. You know, you've got this first paragraph that says, in the rural district, a structure that is not conforming by virtue of extending into the front yard, you've got all this stuff. You could take away the public highway reference. But then there could be a second parallel paragraph that said something, and this is, you know, assuming we don't find a better solution with waivers, in the rural district, a structure that is not conforming by virtue of being in the side yard or rear yard may be able to go up, but up to a limit of a height, but not expand the footprint. Okay. That could be another way of addressing this if you're satisfied that they can go up, but you don't want any footprint increases. That's just another way to, to address it if, assuming that you think this is worth doing, then we make sure we put it on another agenda, as opposed to saying, you know, this won't be a priority, you wouldn't be talking about it until April, so maybe try your luck out of variance. Right, it's a tricky one. I mean, the, the expansion upward too is also tricky, you know, and for that's a neighbor because a, that's a cap. That's a lot of uh, a lot of extra wall space on that side and um, view blockage. Yeah, and yeah, and view Solar. blockage, and and also the um, the part about the twenty five percent along the the side that's um, that's not in conformance. I mean, that's twenty five percent in area expansion. So you could do this like five foot long by 100 foot long building, that would be 500 square feet and that would be less than the thousands or the 2,000 square feet of the original building or whatever it is and still would be less than 25% in footprint expansion, but it would be like um, double or triple the length of the original building potentially if, if it's worth Somebody wanted to put in a single bowling lane or something. <laughs> yeah. One bowling lane. It wouldn't be. It's an interesting question. I think it's yeah, worth it pursuing. Yeah, it's too. definitely yeah. worth discussing more. Yeah. And and it would be intriguing to hear more detail about what they're trying to accomplish so that that can be I taken will, into account. Um, well, we will. I'll have the copies of the plans in the materials when this comes back up. And, and we, you and I will need to talk about what the timing might be. And we'll get to discussion of the November, December meeting schedule probably before we adjourn tonight. So. Right. OK. Right. Well, yeah. It'd be nice to yeah, see yeah, a map yeah. with the zoning how it affects the actual parcel where see. the lines drop, where the lines are on the actual. Oh, you want to see where the setbacks are? Yeah, because it's a 50-foot side yard setback in the rural district, uh, and then in the for small, lots less than five acres, it's 50 yard, 50 foot front. So if that lot is less than 100 feet wide, which I think it may be, it then like it's got no, it's got nothing in the center. Sorry, right, good good intro then. Should we move on to the capital improvement? Yeah, and Peter is here. Yeah. If um, there are questions, um, there were updated tables in the packet. Um, I don't know if you want to start with the conversation that you were having with us in, or if there's anything that Peter you want to say based on the last select board meeting, or? Yeah, if no comments from Peter, the. Uh, yeah, it sounds like we should definitely address the transportation discussion just to see. I mean, is this a, a formal thing that we would need to draft or just a statement that we would make? There's, there's no um, mandate on you. The, the statute says that you may make these comments. Um, and like I had indicated in some of the uh, previous mailings, it's, it's varied how formal the commission has been. Um, from sending a written statement to saying, saying things and having Peter take them back. So I think this is on the agenda again tonight because there was such an interesting conversation last time. People didn't want it to end and they wanted to have a chance to carry it a little bit more. And they didn't know that we had three more hours of meeting to get through. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> um, yeah, so in this case, I guess to open it up, we could, um, I think we, it sounded from the previous discussion that we would be interested in making a statement about transportation grants and just knowing that 
there would be there are funds available through CCRPC. We just need to be proactive in pursuing them and and have the structure set up to be able to provide matching. And I, I don't know if there's a particular mechanism. You need a pen. Um, well, I know I have other pens around here, but um, yeah, this. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't know if there's a particular mechanism that we um, or language that we need to use, or if it's just making that known. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, like the that just building off. I agree with what mm -hmm. you said. Like bringing out this, if we could put them in writing and say that uh, for the capital improvement planning, um, if we could, there are like comprehensive plan that we have discussed that will be good for the next eight years. Um, there are certain priorities that have risen to the top. And if we could align the project planning and capital improvement plan over three to five year, like medium term, where some of those resources that are made available by the federal and the state government could be more proactively used by the, by the local government here. Um, through, for example, like a concrete example would be, you know, like the, this issue arose from the bike, uh, like connectivity and the network connectivity issues. So, for example, there is a lot of funding for one segment of the bike lane that's in this capital improvement plan, but that's not necessarily in, if you look at the hotspots, which were identified by the bike committee on the map, <coughs> those priorities need to be aligned, like where the hotspots are. The projects need to be proactively designed that would enable those matching funds from the local government to kind of like uh, utilize those uh, resources and enable the fulfillment of the priorities that we have listed in our comprehensive plan. <coughs> so first step would be to, for example, have, you know, like a technical feasibility study about network connectivity for bike paths and identification of the gaps where we can kind of like town can be more proactive to identify those bike lane projects which would kind of like enhance the bike connectivity um, in those zones where you know, it could be done. I mean, I think so. It's so I. I mean, that's where the the discussion was. Um, and in some ideas. this ties into the like you've always been a proponent for having a like creating a budget to have a formal study to tie some of these things together, mm -hmm. which I see <coughs> all of this kind of ties together. Yeah, because I think there are going to be places where we want where it's going to be really really important to residents that we have a very we take a very contextually sensitive approach to solving some of these um, challenges and um, and we can if we have an overall study we can identify places where that's really the priority of residents and then other places where maybe there's enough room in the right of way um, or the demand is is so significant that people are are willing to say well we're okay with with pursuing, you know, what some might say a kind of more oversized federal or state facility, like you have on Webster Road. Um, um, so I think I, I I think the lack of predictability about what these outcomes are is is what makes it so hard to, you know, come together as community and pursue these things, and even to um, find consensus on. Um, within the community that of, to pursue funding for these things, you know? So um, I, I, I agree. I think that would be very helpful to just get some and, 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 overall and game building plan. Off of that, it's not just about the bike connectivity. It's similar issues apply to the stormwater management issues, for example. Um, where, like, under the Act 64, the stormwater, like, Clean uh, Water Trust has been established, and the funding is being made available to the towns. But uh, towns have to take certain actions in order to access those funds. But you need to be more proactive. But my my understanding is that uh, Shelvin is now kind of like postponed the stormwater utility for one year or something. Uh, that might be some due to other reasons, but the. Similar resources, we wouldn't be able to use those resources for at least one more year. For example, did we get a stormwater grant 
this year? Wasn't there a small one? What was yeah, that? The, the issue was the, the, storm, the funding of the stormwater program. Um, the, the funding through the utility mechanism versus the tax rate, um, the select board postponed that a year, but there's still, as you can see in the plan, a number of stormwater projects and grants that we would be looking for to do those. So it's just the funding has changed, but not certainly not the project list. So. Mm -hmm. You know, just to piggyback on what you were saying, Asim, I'm thinking also for energy projects, um, the microgrids and the, yeah, like, like the power, the EV stations and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I mean, so, so in terms of like getting these kind of like technical feasibility studies supported so the town builds the capacity and plans ahead for capital improvement plan, like project prioritization does not happen like on ad hoc basis because certain projects just rise to the top. It's more like you want to make sure that you, the projects, those projects rise to the top where we feel that whether it's in energy or stormwater or bike connectivity, that would basically build, add value for the entire community. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's exactly. I have a reaction to it, and, and part of what I was going to ask uh, Peter is, could you say a little, could you talk a little bit about fiscal constraints? I had asked you a question last time of the, what the total amount, you know, annual average was essentially, how consistent is that over time? Because I, I do have a reaction, but. Peter may be better positioned to be able to say, well, you know, having worked with the select board on these CIPs for the last umpteen years, he's got a sense about what kind of level of overall expenditure they're comfortable with. Because the things that you're talking about are, are to me, it ultimately is coming down to, you're looking at the CIP and you don't see the bike path projects, you don't see the energy projects, and it's not like they're not good ideas and it's not like on the stormwater projects and it's not like we don't already have some idea about doing them it's just that if we were to do them all in the next six years the total per year the average would be much higher than what the select board has been accustomed to so one reaction is what a lot of municipalities do is they have fewer things and they keep them you know, they keep them in reserve they know that when the bike path projects that we've been planning for you know, five years before. I mean, the thing to keep in mind is, is that things that are on the CIP right now are there because we did do that planning five or six or ten years ago, and it took that long to get us here. So one response is you just kind of hold them off, and the other is you do what some jurisdictions do. Instead of having a six-year capital plan, you have a 20-year capital plan. Because if the, if the constraint is it's not going to be more than, you know, $10 million per year, and you can't put all of those things in those first six years, do you have to start going into future years? Well, maybe that's what you're saying. But can you just talk about what the select board's comfort is with the total expenditure per year? Um, I don't think the select board really ever designated the total level. Um, what happens is this is a plan, and then we go into the budget season when we, when we are talking about an actual operating budget. And things in the capital plan may be in the first draft of that budget, but then as the select board looks at the total picture, which obviously brings in areas other than capital improvements, um, then, um, then that's where it gets, it gets reduced. I think um, I, that there's, there's been no bottom line number that the select board says, we don't want to see any more than this amount in the capital plan. Um, but I guess the, my I, feeling would be to, put the projects in that you feel are appropriate. And what I'm hearing is it sounds like you know, at least have an item for funding studies so that we, for to do the things you're talking about and have that in there is something that then would be brought forward when Dean prepares his operating budget for the planning department to, um, to present that. Um, I guess that would be my, my take in terms of how it's operated in the past. Yes, it sounds good. I mean, especially for meeting the match requirements of the federal and the state. Right programs that, right. so having well, some kind of line item that we can, as the opportunities come, if the town is willing to take those next steps. Well, well let me illustrate the, the point with the example that we used when we were putting together the draft, which was the Southern Gateway Project. The Southern Gateway Project has a small amount in it, of like $35,000 for that crossing area, because the ex expectation is, is that if we put in the entire project, it's not going to, it won't make it. It's going to be, it's going to blow the CIP apart. So I guess well, your comment makes it sound like put it in and it might not make it into the budget. The point I'm trying to make is that 
if it's floated as an idea, there's no guarantee that it'll be in the CIP either. Well, is it is it true, Peter, that if a, an item is put in for a million dollars, but everybody on the select board thinks it's a good idea and can only fund it for fifty thousand dollars, that they will do that, or will they say that million dollar item easy to cut? Let's take it out completely. What's the well, how's it how does it work? Um, well, at the, the budget that they the operating budget is really where they make those decisions. Um, it would be up to the department head to look at their capital projects, bring them in as their request, and then that, as, like I said, obviously there's a lot of other expense areas outside of capital, um, salaries, insurance, benefits, all of that, um, debt service on existing um, projects that have happened. So, I think. I guess there's no real formula, if you will, to say, well, you you know, put them all in and and see what happens. I would say that we prioritize and we bring in the capital projects that we think can be done. Um, I think the capital improvement plan gives the bigger picture, but then reality is there is another number of other factors that affect the property tax rate, and those have to be taken into consideration. So, I'm not sure I can give you a recommendation as to which amount to put in. I think put in the projects you feel are valuable. I think it's logical to say we need studies for, you know, for this and then, and then show those that those link with other projects that we put in. Um, but really it's a planning tool at this point. Um, and again, I think it shows if you're trying to get grants to show that it's been in the capital plan, it shows us a commitment there and that helps hopefully to get the grants. I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but I don't think I can give you a specific dollar amount to say if it's below this amount or above this amount, it's in or out of the budget. It's much bigger picture when you get to talking about the operating budget itself, many other so factors. I'm wondering if it's, if we should, you know, if just having the item in there uh, will, will ensure its consideration and the select board decides what level to fund it regardless of what amounts are in. The, the CIP. I think that's a fair way to approach it. Okay. Yeah, but some of these investments are lumpy. I mean, the thing yeah. is, you can't build an eighth of a bridge, or yeah. you know. So some things, it's it's going to be either you do or you don't do, or you don't do this year. Right. right. Yeah. And I, I was starting to look at things that we can actually put in that are tangible. I, I think there was a lot of discussion around. Well, there was the the property on Spear Street. Um, and whether or not we are variance waiver easements, that sort of thing, but we didn't. We're we're not in a position to say yes, okay. When we get that easement, here's our mechanism. This is what's going to happen. I, I think what we need is that mechanism for, um, like, yes, from a bike and ped pers perspective, there's been this study. Here's here's the best way forward in terms of how to best interconnect neighborhoods. Like, we have this, this is tangible, this is it. Now how do we fund it and how best can we grow it? We're, I, I feel like we're in this spot where we're, we're trying to make sure that there are funds on the table for something that we don't yet have defined, but conceptually we do, but we don't have it physically enough defined to be able to take action on it, which is why I think I lean more towards um, making sure that we do have as much as I don't think things need to be studied to death, I think that having funds in place for a study, that the outcome of that can be something tangible that says, here's a plan that we can actually put money against and implement over a certain time period. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I'm just worried that we end it up does make sense. talking yeah. a lot about things that then can't actually go anywhere. And so we just talked about it, and then we'll talk about it again next year. Um, so what what can we, and this isn't an accusation at all, it's just more how, how can we tailor what it is that we're proposing or suggesting into things that can actually happen? If you're, so some of this depends on what's the ultimate source of funding. And, and there, you know, Kate's right when she says that federal dollars drive design, and it may result in a community having a facility that some people think is wider than it should be. But if you want to get the 70 or 80 percent of money that comes from the state and or fed, sometimes you have to follow a process. So as far as bike ped projects are concerned, the, whatever study it is that you do, it has to follow a certain recipe if you want that project to get access to those federal funds. So it's got to be 
a particular type of study to be eligible for those dollars. If we're talking about some other kind of uh, investment that is not going to be subject to those kinds of requirements, then it's not the case. But as long as we're talking about bike ped stuff, I need to remind you that if you want to tap outside funds, then it's got to have an alternatives, of, alternatives analysis in it, essentially, as part of it. And it's, Anyway, it's got, to, it's got to meet a certain set of criteria. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a binary thing. I mean, like, let's say on Bay Road, there can be portions of Bay Road that, um, you know, where there nobody lives right there, where it's like, yeah, sure, great, let's, let's, we'll have something kind of wide and the feds will pay for it that, for that segment. But other parts of Bay Road, we want something a much more finer grained um, and, uh, you know, very, very flexibly a facility that, that a series of facilities that flexibly respond to the conditions that are on the ground. Um, and that sounds like something yeah. that can be the, the result of just having a standard that Public Works applies mm -hmm. and you budget for it on an annual basis. I thought what I was hearing before was stuff that is for a study that would lead to a, a project that was well enough defined that you could actually build to address Jason's Yeah, I, I think point. we're kind of almost thinking, mm -hmm. talking about two things. One would be sort of a place-based map about, you know, wh what facility where, what, where, what, where is the connectivity desired, and, um, and wh where do we need the facilities? And then you get into, okay, the next question is, how do we do this? You know, what, what, are, what are the facilities? And that could be a second, once we have that, that overall view that Asim was talking about. And I think this, I think this, applies for bike ped, I think it applies for stormwater and for energy. Um, uh, then we start to get into um, updating manuals to, um, to, so we have the, the standards in place that can it's achieve those The thing I want to ask about goals. bike ped though is that as far as that overarching view, the Paths Committee has given you map 12, I think that it is, that is their view overarching of facilities that are needed. Is that not the starting point for the discussion? I, I'm just curious. I don't know. No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's anywhere near specific enough. If you noticed, you know, we have around Bay Road, for example, we have a big blob area to be studied. You know, I mean, they're just. We think connectivity should happen between this place and this place, but how that happens, you know, we weren't even going to begin to get into talking about prescribing something because. That was so controversial. That's that's where I think we need to start to have some assistance with um, helping people to understand. I don't think it's it's widely understood uh, among a certain portion of the town, um, even why it's in, of the the voting uh, you know tax paying portion of this town. Um, why it's important that there be this connectivity. I mean, we have we have an, a, a culture of of people who. Uh, you know, s still believe that, well, the roads are just too busy and you should just get in your car and drive places. I mean, there, I don't think there's a consensus on, on that. I mean, I think it's very much starting to build that people are, many people are expecting to be able to walk and bicycle between destinations, but it's not 100%. So I think, you know, we have to, um, uh, we've, got, we've just got a lot of work to do. Um, to lay the foundation. So it sounds, I mean, there's, there is money in here for a ped bike path segment number three. Uh, now that's a specific defined thing, but it sounds like what in addition to that, there should maybe be money in here for undefined segments or for studies on for, for, for technical studies. For technical and studies so that so it so the bicycle map that the planning commission was asked to consider and and and, and did endorse um, uh, at, at our last meeting showed um, a couple of different things. It showed information on two different levels. It was um, in certain places, we want this type of facility um, here in these locations to connect these different parts of town. And we only did that where there had been a previous study that, that where the, and where there had maybe been a preferred alternative that had been selected um, uh, by the select board. So in other places where we 
believe it would be very important to have some connectivity because there's no consensus yet on how that is supposed to occur. We had to just kind of put these big sort of blobs on that says this is what we, um, you know, propose. And but we're not getting into on at this map any, any um, detail about how that is supposed to actually happen because. There's no consensus on that yet. There's not even consensus that that, that connection should happen, you know? So, um, And that takes a study or it just takes I think that takes the will of, of the, the committees and the, and the select board? I, I think I, so studies are the first steps. So if you look at these projects, yeah. like the project life cycle, if you will. Visioning, yeah. Visioning and st technical feasibility studies, those, that's the first step. Then right away is the next step. Then the actual implementation of that over whatever time like construction and so forth. So I think uh, uh, it seems like a lot of these uh, visions and the plans that we talk about in like comprehensive plan, they never get materialized and implemented because mm -hmm. they're never put into a technical, like a specific project that sees the light of capital improvement plan because where the rubber hits the road is in capital improvement plan, but we're not like really pushing in terms of like getting this vision encapsulated in the form of a material project that sets the stage in the form of a technical study that would say, okay, well, these are the areas where we need to have right away to put put in the, as Kate said, I mean, we, there are those big blocks in that map, but those are like very vague and kind of like high level areas that have been identified, but we need to have more specific studies done to identify exactly this is where public demand is and this is where we need to have the connectivity between two segments of the bike path. And that would increase kind of like the, the overall usage of the bike path. Mm -hmm. But you can make similar argument about, for example, riparian areas protection in storm water. If you do not preserve riparian areas or, you know, like that, that the storm water, you can make a lot of storm water project investments in other parts of the town. They're not going to be as useful if you have like hot spots. Uh, where the stormwater is just running off if those are not conserved, like, for example, around Platte River or streams, for example. So I think it's kind of like that connectivity, understanding that from a systems level, I think is important. So, Dean, it sounded like you, you were saying that the, the plan has already been developed by the bike and ped well, the map. committee the map or the map. That we folks saw before. I just was wanted to know whether or not the comments that were made before wanted to use that as a starting point or not. And I heard, but it sounds like this, if we're going to ask for things to be put in here, some money for a, a study would. It sounds like. Yeah, what, I feel like they, well, there, there's you guys a step in there that's missing someplace, and I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if we have a town. Team that would handle this sort of thing, but so we, we had a the, the bike the we had a subcommittee that created a map that says this this would be a great way to interconnect things. So what's the next step? So Why generally they... speaking, the way that works is that since years ago there was a paths committee, but back back soon after the paths committee was started, they started planning a path on Webster Road, and Dave Marshall of CEA was you know a newly minted engineer, and he came up with this. You would have loved it, Kate. Very context sensitive. Narrow path along Webster Road that could have been built for, I don't know, at the time, maybe $100,000, $120,000. And the PAS committee brought that to the select board, and the reaction when this design was presented to them was, oh, gee, can you look into getting outside money for it? Which then meant there was a, another study done, and of course, getting the federal funds into the picture meant you had to follow standards and it became a much more involved project and it was gonna cost a lot more money to do it. Anyway, that type of study that is required is like I said, it's according to this formula that the Agency of Transportation uses. The PADS committee since that time has basically said, okay, if we want a facility to be built, we're starting from the premise that the, that the select board is gonna tell us we have to get at least some federal funds, which means we have to do one of these CEAAs. So this last, or the most recent CEAAs that have been done were the Long Meadow Webster Road, which was funded so that we have the Webster Road path and the parts of that. Um, the next one was the Irish Hill project. What was and our portion of the Webster Road? 
what was our portion to build Web zero. that the section maybe Peter can remember I can't remember was off the top of my head the hundred and twenty thousand they could have built all the thing for uh, how did it compare in the end I'm not I'm not sure we probably paid a little less maybe um, but the next CAA was Irish Hill and the, the most recent CAA is the Southern Gateway and you know those those are in the, you know, the, the CAA for the Southern Gateway essentially is in line behind Irish Hill. So if you're a member of the Paths Committee who's been, you know, through this log for years and years, you say, yeah, there may be some cool ideas in the Southern Gateway, but it's behind in line Irish Hill. And we've done those studies of Irish Hill and we know what we should be building if we're going to use federal funds. And it's just going to take time to get that money to build it. So the next thing in line is the next CAA in line. And so, I mean, if there was much more capacity, if the amount of money locally and federally and from the state tripled, then maybe we could be think, thinking of doing some of these simultaneously. But right now, we can't think about doing them simultaneously. They're going to be done in series. But the PADS committee talks about, well, OK, which project do we want to do a CAA on? At one time, it seemed like it was going to be Bay Road, but that didn't result in people being satisfied with the solution. So. It's not, it won't be Bay Road. Bay Road's not in the queue until there's a solution that people agree on. Right, and so that's what I, as somebody who lives on Bay Road, that's what I'm very interested in, in getting into the queue, is is what could be a solution that will work in that context. Um, and I, I, I remember there's a blob in that area as well. Yeah, that's, that's all we if were If you look at the foot, map, there's a know? blob there, but um, it's kind of like not the priority. I mean, that's. Well, what's the $15,000 a year in 1920? 21 that are for the Bay Road corridor. Do you want to talk about that one, Peter? Yeah, I think um, partly that was um, for, uh, I think, it all sort of depended on the uh, Bay Road bridge in terms of when that was going to be replaced. And there were some interim Got it. Uh, things that the yeah, uh, kind of book ends looking that. for. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the detail on Public Works, it's the, that Falls Road up to Thompson Road is, you know, starting and moving forward. Long Meadow to Boulder Hill is, you know, 23. And then you've got safety improvements in the village. And then Bay Road takes the biggest chunk after that. Between the bridge, the underpass, and improvements. I don't know what the Falls Road streetscape is. That one goes back many years, and it's tied to the village plan. And it, uh, it's like it sounds. It's, it's improvements to um, everything from uh, lighting, sidewalks, parking along the stretch of Bay Road. I'm sorry, Falls Road from Church Street to the intersection. So we'd almost need a uh, need a formal document to know. Are, were you saying CEAA? A CAA. A C C -A -A. That's the that's the acronym for the type of study, basically. Right. So so there's been a so there has been a process of getting CAAs. So we have some of those that have already been done. There's probably a queue of ones that need to be prioritized. But it it would strike me as having some kind of a document coming out of the either the past committee or funneled through here um, to say here's here's what the priority work list is, and we use that to feed the SIP process every year. Mm -hmm just to, to be able to provide inputs. And, and I think that that's important because when you have commissions made up of volunteers and there's turnover and that sort of thing, you, you, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. But we want to know that there's a bigger picture plan that's being pursued. Yeah. I agree. Well, I think the thing that's been important to me is to make sure that the capital improvement plan reflects the town plan. And when you have priorities there, there should definitely be projects in the capital improvement plan that support that. I'm not sure how prioritized the town plan lists projects, but certainly that's something I would pay close attention to if there is a list to make sure that they get into the capital improvement plan. Yeah, well, I completely agree. And I think those are, at a high level, there were the things like well, that were listed in the packets with the uh, um, conservation funds, the energy projects, net zero library building, stormwater projects, those types of things. But th this is also why um, 
I, I just kind of pulled back when the request from the select board was, yeah, okay, now prioritize all these things because we got this budget thing coming up and we're going to have to bang this out. And I'm thinking, yeah, we just spent a year and a half, two years working on this comprehensive plan. There's no way humanly possible that there's any priorities that we can put together that are going to materially impact what it is that you're doing in the next couple of weeks. Like, it just, I, I think that this stuff needs to be digested a little bit and we need to get, we need to build some process around it so that we're not just kind of flinging things out there. Um, and and I, I've been a little skittish because I, I understand the, the purpose of the, the capital improvement plan and money's not guaranteed and things shift around and, and this is a great tool, but I also at the same time think that we need to digest what the comprehensive plan that we just submitted a draft for that for the record, hasn't been approved yet by anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no guarantee that that's even going to be in place in February. I hope it is. Um, but I, I just want to make sure that we're being a little bit measured about this and we're not just winding up and having long conversations about things that really aren't going to go anywhere. And if that, that is the case, let's just be honest about it and yeah. say, okay, we addressed it, we talked about it, it's in the meeting minutes next year. Well, as part of what we're doing, like. As, as far as this, you know, short bullet point list to, to say we, we, we take that and prioritize those things and I, maybe add, you know, something else like um, some money out there or just some idea that, that we think um, other things should be funded, like perhaps a new fire station, rec res fire rescue station. That in, there's there's no money in here. Like for instance, there there's three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a new bathhouse at the at the beach in two years, but um, but nothing for fire rescue like for well, the next six years. Now is there, was, there's, there were funds in it for a study of the potential for the fire and rescue stations, you know, where a possible location. So oh, there, is there? Yeah, there is. I, I didn't the, see that. That's the, one of the newest things, right? Yeah, um, it was actually both fire and rescue. Um, I think they had okay. like fifty thousand dollars in next year for a study of the um, best best location for both of those uh, facilities. It may not have made it in the current version. It's kind of a Work in yes, progress in still. 20, fiscal year 19 to have a emergency services facility study. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and okay, I'm also not trying. I'm, I'm not trying to minimize or minimize or put any of this discussion on a back burner or anything. It it it's more just to say that we have we will be putting together a work plan once we know that the plan is on track for approval and that sort of thing, and that's going to drive a lot of things into next year. Um, the select board has the, the budget process that's starting now, and that's going to be pretty hot and heavy, and there's all kinds of constraints that they're working within right now. So unless there's something like an absolute burning platform that has to get done and we've got all of our ducks in a row and we can say, yes, this needs to be funded, it's ready to go, I, I don't know why we're doing this right now. I agree with you. I think the window's too short. We should be working for next year. To it, but that said, I think that we can make a statement just to say that, hey, to the select board, as you're going through this process, as you'll note in the plan, and we have highlighted, Dean, your summaries have been great, to say things like sense of place, bike ped, um, sustainable energy, uh, leading by example in the, in the energy area. Like, there are lots of things, lots of statements that have been made that would be nice to keep in mind as those budget debates are going on, but I don't know that we have anything definitive enough to say this needs to be on there. The Planning Commission says this is big priority, make it happen. Well, can we I'm come happy up with to be that? corrected. I mean, we can, can't we come up with something? Uh, because if we don't get something in this year, it won't be till next year where we can have an opportunity to put something else out there. So it, it seems like something is better than nothing. And we have some idea of, of things, just like you're suggesting. They're, you well, know, but that's these, what I'm saying, things. Just, just to highlight the concepts, but it's not a, I mean, what it, I, I would, uh, feel free to draft something. I'd be happy for us to discuss it, but this all needs to happen in the next, I mean, this would need to happen before our next meeting. Uh, I, I'd well, be glad to summarize, but if, if we can get some kind of consensus on just general things that, that 
everybody would yeah, like I mean, to. I, I would say like my intent was not for this year. It was more like because it was just to kind of like kickstart the conversation because next year it's going to happen the same. We'll just be told to like, okay, well, let's stamp this budget. Two weeks is only the time remaining, and then, you know, yeah. so that, that's the process. So, so it's kind of like for the next year. Conversation was about next year and making sure that we kind of like set aside, tell the select board that to kind of like have some resources set aside for kind of like fulfilling the matching grant requirements if we want to do these technical feasibility studies for, say, bike network connectivity or storm water, kind of like uh, identification of hot spots or, you know, like energy connectivity. So, I mean, that was just kind of like setting the stage for the next year. To what extent we can do it now versus, like, say, when, when the plan is formalized in February, I, I don't know. It's just like a conversation that we were having to kind of like mm -hmm. kickstart that for the next year. So, Which is important. Yeah. So I, yeah. Was, so. I think it would be a little, um, I think I'm concerned about the, the, the time, um, but also a little bit worried about putting the cart before the horse a bit because we don't have an approved plan yet. Yeah. But once we do have an approved plan, I mean, we, I think the plan very effectively integrates land use um, with transportation and resource protection. And so I think it would be, um, the, the next step would be to flesh out um, uh, the, the, the technical um, steps that could or should happen to start to um, implement that vision that we have. But I mean, we're still, we're still sort of in the selling the vision yeah. part of the whole thing. Which I think we've we've done, um, particularly after last week's uh, rejiggering of priorities and stuff, done a pretty um, a pretty com commendable job of. Yeah. So would we, and I'd be happy to call a special phone call meeting or something if we need to ratify something to formally get to the select board. If it's a statement that we're talking about, maybe a statement of intent or something. Would that be? Well, it uh, seems like, I mean, if, if we're, our job is to, like, do some planning, and so it seems like we have to have something a, a little bit defined so that they can well, we say a, yes or no to, yeah. to, the, to the thing rather than um, just a, a concept. We're, so we're, I, we, I think we're so far past that point of saying, here's a thing that we want to have on the capital improvement plan. I can't think of anything that we have our ducks in a row on to be able to say, yes, here's the funding source, or here's something that's so critical and we've got it all completely outlined and detailed that you need to act on this. Please make this a priority. Somebody throw something out. Like, what, what do we have that's in that kind of position? And, and I'm saying that from a position of, We've spent the vast majority of our time over the last year and a half just working on the comprehensive plan. Like, so we're, we're laying a lot of groundwork for it, but we also don't have that plan yet approved. So we could talk in terms of, well, the plan says this, but the plan doesn't technically exist in that form yet. Um, well, we, it, have, I mean, we do have a few things. The, the net zero part of the library building is something that I think we have some kind of consensus on. We have. Um, some money set aside for transportation grants for bike ped projects. Um, and uh, there was something else in here. Uh, maybe it's just those two. But I think to, to come up with, we have to say something to the select board rather than we're st we'll think about it for the next couple of years and, you know, because well, then I certainly not, wasn't saying that, can, but can I? Can I? No, I, I didn't mean it. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering about is what about the little path that was supposed to go from the um, boat launch to Shelburne Bay Park along Bay Road? That had been on the the capital plan, but I noticed it's it's not on there anymore. Do you know what has happened with that? Um, I don't know if Dean has any. Information with the bike ped committee discussing that recently, or I, I haven't been updated. I mean, I think the, the past committee at the last the joint meeting with the village safety group reiterated its support for that project, and the answer we got back from Lee was that well, things had slowed down because it wasn't clear whether or not it would be um, within a wetland. Well, and I I have corresponded with Lee on this topic because I mean, this is. 
it's a topic of great interest to me. Um, and uh, he was not sure what the conclusion was in terms of whether it fell within a, wet, a wetland buffer or not. Um, but um, but we did a little back and forth on email, and and you know if if so, permits can be sought, you know, to get. Um, that done. So, but I'm wondering why it's not on here because I think it should be a priority th that I would like to see put back on here. It's a that would be an incredibly important small little segment towards connecting two massively important public facilities. So, was, was the idea that it was folded into one of those fifteen thousand well, dollar figures? That's what I was wondering. Um, it would be yeah. on the north side of the road. I think I've heard that answer before. The boat launch, the, the, the lake boat side. side, yes. Uh -huh. side. Yeah. I wonder if it wouldn't work better on the other side. Well, it would be ideally you would want it on both sides because there's there's a lot of back and forth through that area. It's very well used, but um, the the um, uh, the the first step was to put it on the the north side. So what we were saying is is that uh, Peter and I are both. Um, maybe inclined to think that it would be included in that $15,000 per year figure of the Bay Road improvements, corridor improvements. So it's not called out on its own. I don't know if it was ever called out on its own, even in prior CAPs. I think it was included in the operating budget the first draft a year ago, and then it was taken out again because yeah. of the constraints of where the select board wanted to end up. I think the request was made at least in the operating budget last year. Yeah, I mean it's been the it's been the subject of uh, UPWP grant applications. It's been the subject of a lot of different things. But I think the short answer to your question, Kate, may be that it's in line thirty-two. Okay. If the commission would like to make it explicit, though that the 19, FY 1920, $15,000 should go towards that, and maybe that's part of your message. I, I would like to see that. That's connecting the boat launch to the, the, the wreck path that's along the shore? Uh, it's, yes, but it's just along Bay Road, so right now there's a big ditch, which it just makes it very, it's dangerous to walk, um, and you know, there's a, they mow a strip there, but it, that, you know, if you have a bike or you know, pushing a stroller, I saw somebody not too long ago pushing somebody in a wheelchair, and they were pushing them on Bay Road, you know, in the same direction of the traffic. So this is just unacceptable. It's 2018. I just wonder if a, a trail on that side, which is intended to go further across the bridge, I would assume. Right. You wouldn't want to cross that boat launch parking lot. That would be incredibly unsafe. It would make much more sense to be on the other side. Of the no, you know, you, you might be going if you to can the boat get launch. if you can get to the boat launch. The boat launch is is a hugely park. Uh, people park there yeah. all the time and they walk up to Shelburne Farms, so it's a it's a, a critical set just segment to have along that that area. I mean, it's all of us who live there are the devil's advocate. They're not supposed to park in the boat launch for using. Anything other than the lake? It, you know, people do. You tell them. It's I know a, they do. We tell them that. It's I'm a rendezvous just, point. Okay, I'll give you another reason, I'm Dick. So I'm not, Children I'm, from I'm my saying. neighborhood <laughs> ride their bikes to, to connect to the Tie Hall path. They have to make a left-hand turn in traffic to get onto the to to get onto the Tie Hall Hall path because there's there's not a way for them to safely get right now to that crosswalk. So this would allow them to get off the road once they get to the boat launch and then they can ride their bikes to the crosswalk and then cross over safely. But so, they have to cross the road to get to the boat launch. Right. It's not a perfect situation. <coughs> you still no, have the... You're riding, you, you you're riding on the same side as the boat launch. Yeah. You still have to get across the bridge. Yeah. You know, we don't live in a perfect world, but this would Im I'm immeasurably just thinking if help. If the trail does get extended, it would be safer, I think, on the other side of the road. That's, it's just a comment. That's well, can we use this as an example to say that if this is great. It's good to have passions involved in this kind of stuff. So, would I think we the trail need... should go. Ooh. Definitely be built. 
so it seems like there's interest in that. This is one of those things where we would need to have, I would imagine, a CAA or something in place so it's that we just can. Just entirely local funds. So the CAA question is is not so this is relevant a here. Total local thing. Yeah. yeah. So then, do we have? I mean, in this specific instance, is there something where there's a proposal that can be put out there or? anything that we could actually take action on, or are we just talking about something that has a line item for 1920 budget, potentially? There's a conceptual design, you know, it's a rough drawing, but it isn't something that is gonna take significant engineering. I mean, it's really not. So it's the sort of thing that is really, just, it, could have, it could be in some communities done just you know, as a highway department project. They would just decide they're gonna put a path there. So that could be one of those things that from a, like, if there were a, I mean, a statement coming from the Planning Commission could say, here are some things that we have discussed, the transportation technical study being one of them, um, as far as from a past committee priority standpoint that there are funds floating around or thought has been put into them that I don't know if that would be the priority, but that sounds like that would be a priority. Um, and as the bridge is scheduled for two years, it would make sense to go after it now. Yeah. Right. I mean, once they renovate it, then it would be too late. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and I, I think I'm just, I, I'm not trying to be obtuse here. I'm trying to figure out where does the rubber meet the road, or are we just talking? It's the closest thing we have. I mean, these, like, right. item number 31 and 32, <laughs> they yeah. need to have some kind of, like, something. bike path included with that planning. Uh, yeah, and I would think so. I don't know if there's a, a note that would go with that and people know what yeah. that is, or yeah. if there's been general consensus that 15K a year So hits. Peter, do you want to talk about the narrative? Because there is a, I mean, we're looking at tables here, the CIP sure is tables a plus a narrative, there, right? mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think maybe what, some of what impact you could be having is on how So the other thing Peter that, that I would say that I would like done as somebody who lives over there is I would like um, the streets striped to 10 feet with fog lanes, to, uh, 10, fi 10 foot lanes with fog lanes. And that would add immeasurably also to, that would slow traffic down and um, create slightly safer conditions for walking. Just over there or, or everywhere? Starting there. Starting on Bay Road, if we could, if we could. Because you live there. <laughs> well, no, because because it, because there's a huge need. It's incredibly dangerous over there, and we don't have any off-road facilities whatsoever. I mean, like on Falls Road, there are. I mean, they're not perfect, but at least um, there is a sidewalk, for example. Um, but we have nothing on Bay Road. I mean, people are just walking in the street. So what, wh where are we going with this right now so that we don't end up being here until 11 again? Um, well, I just, I thought we were, we're asking for over. more clarifications and it just says Bay Road corridor improvements. I'm just suggesting that we state what those are. Right, and are. Dina just asked Peter for an example of the narrative and then you talked about fog lanes. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I would say two, two things. Build the little path and, and stripe the fog lanes. These seem to be, you know, things that have been talked and talked and talked about for years, and they never actually happen, you know, so. Um, so I would like to ask then, going back to that question about the narrative, are, so 15,000 is, is in the SIP for the, the following three years. Is that something that would go toward these types of things based on any narrative that you have been a part of? I think that would, that would be reasonable to assume that. Cool. It's either put it in the narrative or somehow convince the select board to change the wording of the entry in the, in the, law, in the table. Right, and that's just it. I mean, I, if, if we're here talking about something that already exists, we don't need to be talking about it. We just need a clarification. And us, we could spend the next 30 minutes talking about it and that's not gonna answer a question. Um, so, what do you think the best way to, to go about this, to have everybody just list like two projects that, that then we can um, talk about somehow? Do we need to have this uh, a list by next let's meeting just or two, by the, now? The two things Kate mentioned, let's just use those. We can certainly add those for the... be made part of that? Well, I think we all, uh, we all have other things that's fine to so add. that's that's right 32 there, yeah. yeah i mean we don't have time oh yeah we don't have time 
But I feel I, like I, we should all voice our our preferences rather than just one. If we're if we're going I, to voice any, okay. I guess. Yeah. Well, and this is where I was just going back to. The Planning Commission has put a lot of time into getting this plan together. We went through an extended exercise of prioritizing the recommended actions in the sessions sections that can be referenced. Um, Dean has done a, a really good job of providing summaries of what we've been doing with the plan so that people are aware of that. All of that can feed into the budget discussions that happen. I would also welcome everybody on this commission, if you have the time and inclination, to show up to the select board hearing when they're talking about this stuff. I, I don't know if the budget meetings are open or not. Yeah, they're public meetings. Sure. So, I mean, you, you could probably knock yourself out hearing the details behind a lot of these things. I, my, my main focus right now tonight is what, what can we do that's actually going to be helpful that we could get to them? And I think as far as any kind of statement, I personally would be happy with what we had put before. But if we want to go that extra mile, um, some of these summaries in here, um, like the conservation funds in the SIP, I did have, uh, I did get some feedback from a member of the Natural Resources Committee that did come up about how can a fund be in here. Um, I responded that I'd really want to think about how to approaching that because the capital improvement plan isn't necessarily a budget. And as was mentioned during that discussion, and I just want to say this for clarification, that um, because the conservation fund or the open space fund has a ballot item each year, that does it compli it would complicate things, I would imagine, to have something. You're not putting a specific budget line item in here. This is not a budget per se, right? Like the, it leverages list. things that come from budgets. Like I see there, there's a cruiser fund, there's a highway equipment fund. There are funds that exist that tie into this. Um, and I wasn't saying this to distract us with the conservation fund, but more to say that um, th that is something that I would like to discuss as well, is how do the funds tie into this and how can we increase funds beyond ballot measures and that sort of thing and by pursuing grants. So like that kind of thing, I would like to have a much better understanding of. The um, a line item to facilitate energy projects is there defined. I think that would be great too, but my understanding of the SIP is that it actually has to be something that is tangible and exists and that there can be a plan for that you can actually action against. Yeah, it's basically a list of capital projects. The funding is a different story in terms of how you get that. That's the operating budget and impact fees or whatever. But I think the main purpose of the capital improvement fund is to list capital projects that are priorities. I think your points earlier about the comprehensive plan emphasizes this, this, and this. I think that's very helpful to make a statement because when we're working on this then that, we keep that in mind and look for those kinds of projects. And maybe that's as far as you can go at this point. I understand you're saying that the plan hasn't been fully approved, but at least you have items in there that help me when I'm revising it year to year to say, let's check those and make sure that we have those reflected here. That yeah, would be helpful. And those are the, the things that we can say as feedback from the Planning Commission. That's what I had in mind from a statement perspective to say, hey, through our discussions, we'd like to prioritize the, like, the study around transportation to make sure that we can take advantage of funds that are available. Um, we'd like to investigate um, like a net zero library building, which I imagine that budget is relatively self-contained in however it is that it's proceeding. Mm -hmm. um, but to whatever degree those topics come up in the select board, board's deliberations, it would be good to know that, hey, the Planning Commission is a proponent of any net zero capabilities or community solar or any other of those types of capital projects that would be coming in the future because the new plan that we're putting forth does support all of that. So, so, that so, so having a statement like that, yeah, maybe you can craft it uh, first draft and send us by email. We can like work on it or Google, draft, Google Docs and submit it uh, as from like a statement from planning commission that would be great in the state. and i think that would be helpful for the select board if they have that kind of a statement if they got competing projects that they're looking at in the operating budget now it's talking about funding which do we choose and again if you have as if it links to the town comprehensive plan that's a strength to say this that's a priority yeah. um, it helps the select board prioritize and determine Okay, we don't have enough money to do everything. What do we pick? Right, certainly. We, 
Yeah, which all ties back to our preparedness to be able to back up and defend. I, I personally am not in a position to write that statement, which is why I was asking if anybody else would be interested in that. Um, because I feel like it's going to lead to more deliberation. Like, whatever statement I come up with, it's not like people are going to say, yep, OK, good. Like, w we need to have a special meeting or some kind of discussion. We can't do it on email because the open meeting laws. So we need to have some oh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And this has to happen before the 13th, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And our next meeting is the 15th. So I'm really not trying to be a pain in the ass. I'm trying to be as practical as possible. Yeah. And we keep blowing these meeting times every week. <laughs> so the prioritization that I missed, was there a, that was within each section, but was there a meta prioritization? Because we talked about that at one meeting I did make before that, of coming up with like a top 10. That would go into our work plan, okay. which would be a separate. But that's the list of, that would need to drive into the capital improvement plan. To me, that's It is, which is why, from a time perspective, I didn't ever see this really happening. But right. I mean, the discussion is great. And if we can distill this discussion down into some bullets that can at least let the select board know where, like, where we're thinking and what needs to be included. Yeah. I, I've been involved in too many similar situations where, in the end, nothing yeah. can happen. So it just becomes a giant colossal waste of time. And I've got that feeling really strong right now. So that's why I'm pushing back. Yeah. No, I'm, I think I'm agreeing with you that I think until we have a, we can pull out from the plan the, the highest priorities we have, mm -hmm. we, could be, we could give them stuff. But I don't know that it would be any consensus among all of us or that it would be really well thought out enough to sort of know what's the priority. I mean, unless you think differently, you think, you, Stephen, you got time to go through the plan and pull out the top five things? Yeah, unfortunately not in the next two weeks. <laughs> right, right. Feel what Jason's talking about, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and unless we just make it short. I mean, the bullet sweet. list is nice to say these are the, our points of emphasis from the plan. Yeah. So as they make decisions, they can say, is it a point of emphasis from the plan? But yeah, I mean, I think we're half a cycle behind in terms of coming up with our yeah. top priority list, which is, I mean, it's fine. I'd rather get it right than rush and give them something that we're like, oh, wait, now, actually. Exactly. Well, if we do know two things, we could suggest two things. And it wouldn't be comprehensive by any means but it, it will at least be getting two things. And, and you know, I don't know if it needs to be um, like individual small projects. Like, okay, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I have you know, my own list of those things too. But, um, you know, maybe for the purpose of right now, uh, it is just uh, the net zero portion of the library building and some funding grants for grants for, um, uh, for grant funding. Um, for some of these head bike projects, or just some money in there for a project, you know, a future project or something like that, so that there's, so that there's some placeholder in there, so that somebody sees an item, a line item, and then can you know can remember that. It's the net zero piece because that was cut from the project, so you'd like to restore that through a capital. Project? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be net think, zero ready, basically. Right. But not net zero. Yeah. So really, it's, it so involves they, solar panels on the on the roof and connection to them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I would like to see the town lead by example and retrofit all of our buildings with solar panels and all the other good stuff. But if they're a, isn't an appetite to do that in the current environment, and B, there isn't a town plan that can support it. No, I'm just trying to understand what that, when you guys kept talking about the net zero piece, what, what you meant by that. <clears throat> yeah. So I've been involved in the library Z. project, and I know it's, it's basically been a, I'm on the two minute a work. trimming away of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this would be a we'll way to try and get something back in. Right. That's the thinking, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be it. I mean, even, even just taking this this bulleted list and making transportation the, the first one, somehow distilling what it is that we just talked about. I'm just not seeing a one-to-one -one 
I, I don't think that there's a, a, a magic bullet that the select board can get from us that says, oh, this makes sense. I think it's my read of this is that the select board is just looking for input that could help them when they have decisions between a couple of things. Well, what's a priority? Well, the planning commission is leaning this way. And I think that would be helpful. And, and that's where I say a lot of the summaries that have been presented on what the plan is, and if we distill the plan into here are the key points and priorities that we're going for, my position is that we have done this numerous times already. I think we just need to make sure that that gets into the conversation. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's backwards. Maybe it's this, you know, there's expertise, there's knowledge. We have to flip this situation so that if they get in a, in a uh, place where they have to make a choice, they say, well, what do you think? That would be excellent. <laughs> and then we could convene you know, some kind rather of Rather than having to write the statement that may fit into one of their holes. Yes. <laughs> that would be fantastic. So what we're suggesting is a tweak to the process or a kind of, um, I don't know, massaging of the process a little bit where they... Um, yeah. I mean, the thing about the capital, the CIP, CIP is that it, it's not on a statutory deadline. So if they have this hearing and there's this there's a pressing issue and they say it would really be helpful to know what the Planning Commission thinks about A versus B before we approve this, they can always continue it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that would stop that. Well, and I think one of the, the other I mean, I know that, that I, I just want to clarify one thing. I know that there's this overall schedule that fits the CIP into the overall budget planning process, but that's an overview. It doesn't, strictly speaking, drive the budget. I mean, they can make decisions about the budget independent of the CIP if there's one element of the CIP that's still hanging. I do have to go. Sure. Thank you, Bill. Well, and, and the, the other place that I'm coming from is also recognizing that in years past, we have submitted a memo or something showing, hey, here are some priorities or here are things that we would like to have in included. I think that that document is the draft that we have just spent all this time putting together. I mean, it, especially going through that exercise of prioritizing, I think that if there are discrepancies in conversation or oh, which way should we go, absolutely a question could be asked of the Planning Commission for feedback or could also look at the draft just to say, well, here's what's been put together and here's how things have been prioritized. Clarifying questions are great. but. There was a lot that went into that. I don't just want it to be tabled. Um, all right. So I don't know where that leaves us. Do, or well, I think some of where it leaves us is me asking Peter, you know, you've been taking a lot of notes. I think you took a lot of lo notes last time. And it's something, it's conversation that you've heard that could be influencing the content of the narrative. I haven't seen the narrative yet, so I don't know how it plays out. Maybe if people had seen the narrative, your response would be, that's good. I also think that the listing like what's in the memo is, is something that Peter can see, and I'm not sure, it hasn't been formally transmitted to the select board as, as far as I know, but maybe you have. Maybe the things that you heard last time have already been shared with, yet, the, no. with the select board. But if the instructions from this body are to Peter, okay, you've sat through several minutes, approaching hours of discussion, um, we would ask you to convey those to the select board to the best of your abilities. And Peter's got a request from you to do that. So maybe given the timeline, that might be the best approach for now. And maybe yeah. we can prepare better as the comprehensive plan comes out in February for next year's plan. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe you can, that maybe might be a best period to move if before, forward at this point. Before you put the, 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 uh, the materials in their packet for the hearing night, and you want to run some ideas, you know, you say, I wrote it up this way, Dean, what do you think? Or what does Jason think? We can give feedback to Peter. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I'm happy to do that. I really am not trying to gum things up. I'm just trying to make sure that the stuff that we do actually yeah. has some kind of a meaning to it. I mean, practically speaking, if the greatest impact, you know, in negotiations, you control the document, you control the process. Peter is really pretty central to controlling the document. If, if this group has specific ideas that it wants reflected in the document, then it should be telling Peter, we want to see you change the wording of line 32 as follows. 
I'm not sure that the group's at the point where it can make those kinds of recommendations, but you've given them a lot of grist for the mill. Right, and, and I think that's where I was starting to get concerned because we've spent an hour on something that we had allocated, what, 20 minutes to? And the, the conversation that we were starting to get into could go on for another three hours in terms of line by line, how do we as a commission feel about these things? And that's not the point of this particular discussion. It was more for broad-based guidance in terms of helping with budgetary conflicts or where to prioritize. If we wanted to do something like that, I would be happy to put time on a, on a future agenda so that we can work through this for, I mean, it would have to be in time for the next year, but so that we can be more involved with that or be able to provide more formal input. Nothing against that. That sounds like a good plan. Cool. Any other uh, comments before we? I guess I would just be looking for Dean's or someone's guidance as to how to draft it. I mean, there's been a lot of comments the, yeah. just, just been thrown around. I'm not sure I'm the best one to synthesize those into some points. So maybe if Dean can help assist with I, I that think, process. I certainly I think work with you, but I mean, I, I too am in a I, I place mean, I'm where I'm not sure. Come in or something and we could chat for a little bit to see what makes the most sense. And, and Stephen, if you have thoughts as well, as yeah. long as we just don't have a quorum. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I feel like it would be something along the lines of how the plan has been summarized with what the new changes are and the priorities and where we're trying to head with it. Ultimately, I think it's a short statement that is along those lines that hits some of these topics that we've talked about. Yep. Well, thank you for paying attention to this. It looks like more. Well, for everybody, yeah. And Peter, <laughs> thank you for all of your thank time you. with this. Thank familiar with what goes into this, and this is impressive. Um, all right. So since we've mentioned the comprehensive plan a couple of times. Uh, so your packet. Is that still out there? Yeah. This was supposed to be, is supposed to be a status report. I'm going to uh, run through a few things. If I shift my gears here just a little bit. Um, I did not make paper copies of materials for tonight, but expect to make them for the packet that's going to go out before the next meeting, which is on the 15th. Um, however, I want people to know that there are uh, lots of things on the web that if you want to look at the latest version, you can actually see it there. Um, I'm just going to say that I'm confident that Maya has gotten the things that she um, was given as edits. She has identified, I think, only a couple of places where we need a um, yeah, credit for a photo on page 19 and a caption for a photo on page 82. This is, I'm just going to refer to this list because I think these are things that we don't have to answer tonight, but as we go from now to the meeting on the 15th, we should have answers lined up for these things. Um, there is another place I had caught a mistake where uh, on page 92 of the energy section, uh, it refers to map 14, and it really should be map 12, something like that. Um, Don Rendell of the Natural Resources Committee had sent an email, and he had identified two things. And I think they may have already been caught, but I had just pasted into this. Uh, the word designated was repeated, um, and then there's the word and. So it's pretty, pretty minor stuff. Uh, more substantive questions that we need to just work through eventually is, you know, are the future land use planning maps going to be changed? Or do, is there a sense that the future landing, future land use maps going to need to be changed before it goes to the select board? Because um, I'm hopeful that as we get between now and the 15th, if we know certain things are likely to be changed, then we can be working on them in advance so that after your meeting on the 15th, they've already basically been done so that there's not much delay before sending things on to the select board. Um, if you run across things that you think need to be done, 
let me know and I can add them to this list. I can also make it part of mailings that go out to everybody. Um, Just to clarify on the future land use maps, were those, and I'm forgetting So you had the asterisks and right. then the references and that's how, that's how things were taken care of and then that later map refers to association lands. So, so specifically changed. making those updates in the actual, actual, actual map PDF itself that Maya would Well, no, Maya, it. that's already been taken care of. Oh. So the question is, is that, okay, that was, that was the solution to be comfortable with warning the public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything more that since we're not facing, you know, the, the, the clock ticking, in quite the same way that we were that night, is there anything more that might need to be done as far as the future land use map or any of the other maps? Now, I can mention that with the bike ped map, um, the PADS committee, uh, after having you know said, we here's the map, uh, there, there was a, a meeting and there are some good points. Um, and so uh, I made this to reflect some of their comments. If you look at their map, there's, the, it, there's an area um, illuminating Shelburne Farms. It doesn't recognize the in holdings. So they think, hey, that needs to be fixed because this is colored as uh, privately owned, open to the public. Those in holding properties are not open to the public, so they're saying this needs to be fixed. So anyway, they're fixed that. There also was at least one member of the past committee who's wondering whether or not the Meach Cove property, which you can sign up and get a card and you can use their trails. They're wondering whether or not um, that should be colored in a manner similar to Shelburne Farms. Um, there were some kind of, um, you know, very um, discriminating things like the way that the roads are shown in Shelburne Museum. They're shown, the paths are shown as roads and they should be more like some of the other paths. Um, so anyway, there are changes like this that I guess I would think that the Planning Commission would be, okay, yeah, you know, we can, we can adjust the map. Um, but it would be the sort of thing that we would take care of so that when the night of the hearing comes, when you're ready to make a motion, we can refer to a new version of the map. And that goes to the select board. Those updates make sense to me. Are there yes. reasons um, to not? I mean, I don't think there are reasons not to do it. I'm just letting you know that these are things that are happening. Now, um, as far as the other um, things going on that I wanted to update you on, um, Pam Brangen this afternoon supplied me with the last of the map book maps. And those are now um, online. Uh, and they are, um, they haven't been printed yet. They're ridiculously slow to print, but we do have the constituent parts of the so-called map book. And she will be making that uh, in the web form sometime, starting sometime next week. So at the night of the hearing, um, there was a crude document that looked, you know, we called it the prototype. So it was like this, okay, we, we know that we're gonna have a village planning sub areas map, and this was just a screenshot from the old one. And so Pam has done all of the map book maps using her format, and I think there are 26 of them, and those are posted online. I'm not gonna walk through every single one of them, but she has done that, and it's been a heap of work, and I'm really wow. grateful. Um, yeah, thank you, Pam. Um, there, are, uh, there are some maps, um, well, one in particular that we were waiting for the longest time from the state archaeologist to get some data from him, and we finally got some data that we had to use to produce this map, and it's, it's different from what I had expected, um, but we do have an archaeology map in there now. So anyway, that's going to be what I said about historic or uh, map book maps, unless there are questions. No, that's great. That is a lot of work. E yeah, um, I I will encourage you all to um, go to the Google Drive where these things. It's it's so big that you'll have to download it because you can't use the Google Viewer. It chokes on documents that are this large. Uh, 
although I may be able to just also do them separately. But, um, and along these lines, now that we have the map book um, maps uh, composed, we also have um, the other things that I was talking about before as making up the uh, appendix. So we had those graphics, those are all in there, and then we had this um, document that we were calling the compatibility statement. Mm -hmm. This was showing how our plan meshed. So anyway, we had those three pieces. Um, I've bundled them up basically uh, because of something that I haven't talked about yet, which is regional review. So Jason is aware of the fact that um, we've started the process with the Regional Planning Commission to have them review the plan. So um, that means that a group called the Planning Advisory Committee has a meeting on November 7th, I believe it is. They have a statutorily required public hearing. Nobody almost ever, almost no one ever shows up. Uh, and then there's a discussion that leads to a recommendation that goes to the full Regional Planning Commission board. Uh, and you hope it's a motion to call our plan adequate, basically, uh, and to confirm our planning process. So in order to do that process, we have to fill out some forms and we have to send them copies of the plan. Uh, and so that's why I bundled these pieces up into an appendix. So just so everybody knows that in the online version, since the Regional Planning Commission is going to be looking at the formatted version of the plan, there's a modified version of the cover that covers the appendices. Um, the last thing I want to say about that regional review process is that if anyone from the Planning Commission can show up, um, it would be great. It's not required, but I do think it could be helpful. Um, the other there will where be one. Where is that? You mentioned it was at 7 to 2.30. Where is it? It's at 2.30, and it's at the Regional Planning Commission offices, which are in Winooski, which it's 110 West Street, I think, is the address. Um, November 7th? And November 7th. It's a Wednesday afternoon. If, I, if I've got the date right, it's the Wednesday. Um, that agenda will um, also include that group's review of the Burlington plan. So Burlington is also going through the similar process. Maybe the most significant aspect of the review that the Regional Planning Commission staff and this PAC group is going to do has to do with energy. And so the feedback that I've gotten so far is that the person who reviews these may have some comments on energy. So I'm looking at you, Jason, just to let you know that she's said she's going to have some comments and she will supply those to me. I don't know what they're going to be about. I thought I had done a pretty decent job responding to the checklist, but um, we may need to talk some more just That's so nice. that we have answers to the questions that they raise. Mm -hmm. um, that may be all that I want to say right now. Questions? It was astounding to me that Maya got the changes done in this quick period of time, so I'm really grateful to her, you know. That was um, great, and I do just I'm want to grateful thank to Pam for the work on the maps. Absolutely, and, um, I, and I also just want to thank everybody involved here for bearing with that last meeting. That was definitely a slog. Really glad I didn't come. I was grateful for you. Yeah, I was never <laughs> Oh, we didn't want to be in your shoes either. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, okay, so then should we move on to other business? Mm -hmm. If there is any. Or uh, correspondence. And if not, motion seeing adjourn. none. Yeah, motion to adjourn by Andrew. Oops. Second by Kate. We are adjourned. Okay.